It's really thinking about it. Oh, uh oh. Oh, oh it's okay. coming. It's, it's, it it's, thought it's, about it's, it. It's there. It's there. Dude, dude, OBS just flickered in like five different colors for the bitrate and then decided oh, it would God. be green. And I was like, oh. Uh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> your, your computer just goes, you, you click something on your computer and then it goes, Hur. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, don't you really dare funny have. Funny if I just like did something completely different right now. <laughs> don't right? you dare have slow internet. You were literally in kissable range of the router. Be a real dick move if I crashed right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on a project for the last two weeks, and the internet at the studio where we're doing it went down on Monday when I was in LA and needed to connect remotely. <sighs> that sounds yeah. fun. No more internet problems, please. Ever. P power keeps going out over here because Texas has such a wonderful grid. Hooray! Get on a solar grid. I know. Itch the TXU. I know. Embrace the revolution. I I, I don't own a home, so I'm kind of limited. I'm in an apartment complex. You're also in California. No, I'm not. Or wait, no. I get you and Bosco. I can listen, I can, I get you and Bosco mixed up sometimes. Fight, I'm sorry. Fight, 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 they are an old fight, married fight. couple, so it makes sense. <laughs> really... I, I, I don't know anyone who's ever confused me and Bosco. Oh, I don't even. I, have you don't know Gaijin. Mark, 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 Mark. I've been editing for like seven hours today. So, were you editing our friendship? Apparently, <laughs> Mr. Apparently, Let's Go Hang I'm Out, and you never tell me to hang out. Nah, he I did have that in no post. Time. Uh -huh. Oh my. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the oh. Unexpected Hello, Wolves. Hello, Gaijin. I miss playing Halo with you. I, I know. The This is the, the last Unexpected before the wonderful, spooky month of October. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So. The hour of oh, the golf is long. upon us. <laughs> This gonna mess around life. and do a bone trousel. Darkness falls across the land. Uh, but, before, <laughs> uh, but before the midnight hour comes, uh, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, starting with Gaijin Gooba, where can they find you? What are you up to? I'm losing my mind tonight because I can't differentiate people, my own friends. So if Milo turns into, what was it? Not Olaf. What was his anti? Olim. Olim. When he turns into Olim and starts casting knock spells, that's where we're going to be tonight. However, that being said, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Goomba, no H, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, as Bosco had mentioned, we were playing a little bit of uh, Halo 2. That was, that was, that was pretty fun. Uh, however, I got thrown a bunch Blast. of new games at my face. So one of them, which I played yesterday, it's a... Uh, it's just literally called Enraged Red, ugh, Enraged Red Ogre. Um, and if you've ever heard of the story of Night Dark Oni or the Crying Red Oni, it's a spiritual successor to that folk story. And you literally just beat the shit out of all different kinds of yokai in a quad. Do you remember Super Adventure Island 2? It was not quite a, a Metroidvania, but it was kind of close. You just went to different parts of the map and they affected other parts of the map. That's kind of what this game is. And I actually really like it. However, I am also in the process of playing AK Axolotl, which is like Axolotl plus AK-47. And it is very much an Enter the Gungeon-like, except how, unlike Enter the Gungeon, you sacrifice children to the Dark Crystal so a Skeksis can give you permanent upgrades. And that is not me being hyperbolic. That is actually what happens in that game. So that's been fun. Uh, you could do that, or you can raise them to be different classes. It's fine. It feels like early 2000s uh, Newgrounds, so I'm having a blast. But um, expect a new video either Friday or Saturday. Samurai, cowboys, they seem very, very different, don't they? No, they're literally the exact same fucking thing, and I'm, I'm about to show you why. So if you're a film buff, if you like cowboys, if you like samurai, if you like Japan, if you, if you like the Wild West, you're going to like this one. It's something no I'm one's sorry, really talking about. Cowboys. I did say cowboys. Yeah. Cowboys. Uh, and then last but not least, please go by my boy. Uh, he's probably not gonna make it, cause um, he's got less than a week, and we're not half funded. But um, if you've been waiting, please don't let him be the only boy. So who's next? I can't believe you would you mix those up, Gaijin. That's like mixing up Will Ferrell and Will Smith. I, who would do that? Who? Yeah, seriously, who would do that? 
I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, Mark, where can they find you, and what are you up to? Well, you can find me being able to tell the difference between Will Smith and Will Ferrell on <laughs> Twitter and Blue Sky at Mark Allen Jr. You can find me on Twitch here at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming, and you can follow the adventures of my fat sleepy cat bunny on Instagram at Chonk for Life. I have been so freaking busy. Um, I had to fly to LA on Saturday and fly back on Monday, and then I did like 48 hours of no sleep, and then I slept, and then had a full day today, and then I have a full day tomorrow. But I swear, Sunday there will be a three-hour music challenge stream. I had to miss a week for the first time in, like, seven weeks. And I'm really upset. But I promise it's for good reason. So come by my Twitch here on Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to do it. There's going to be a three-hour music challenge stream. It's going to happen. And just to appease the gods, I've been listening, uh, listening to basically nothing but drum and bass for the last two weeks which means I can't possibly get it on the spinning wheel on Sunday. So maybe we'll do a genre we haven't done yet. Who knows? Other than that, uh, hey, are you going to be in t uh, Los Angeles from January 4th to the 7th of 2024? Yeah. Like anime? Yeah. You should go to Anime Los Angeles. Yeah, I'll be here. I'm Why? You guessed there. It's going to be fun. Oh, snap. We're going to have, like, signings and panels a couple of panels i'll be doing with some friends it's gonna be awesome check it out that's all i got for now right on uh xanalus grim where can they find you what do you owe to hi you can find me over on mondays at 7 p.m pst over at twitch.tv slash grim where i'll be continuing a DD game for Bosco, Monty, and a few other friends. If you want to find the VODs for the previous uh, installments of that, you can go to my Twitter over at Zany underscore Grim. Aside from that, you can find me on Tuesdays around 12 PST or noon PST. Uh, getting back into the Mech Warrior online, just grind of it. Uh, we had a really long session yesterday, which was cool. And then in the evening, we will be doing either Halo Reach Lasso or maybe Void Crew with a few other people that we don't usually play with, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, and then lastly, Thursday, you can catch me over on Monty Switch channel, where I am a sad human fighter in uh, Monty's Dungeon of the Mad Mage. It's a lot of fun. It's okay. Even you though got there's a, a lot of tears. Last session. Yeah, I found a, a little flump, finally a lawful good creature that I can interact with, but we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> Anyways, that's me. Excellent. Zito, where can they find you? And what are you up to? Uh, find me over at twitch.tv slash Zito. The stream bullied me with kindness. So now for the next, it was seven days. Now we're up to five. For the next five days, it's carts. And apparently some people, like someone in here, have been coming into the stream and talking me up on the Discord. And we ended up gabbing about what our fucking randomly generated one piece oh, double crew powers were. That was great. So, and and I'm sorry, nothing's going to top that someone got Fred Durst as a power. Oh, I missed that what? one. Wait, the power was human, Fred Durst? human the human so, no, human fruit model. Oh Fred no, Durst. no, no, it was the Nuki Nuki fruit. <laughs> uh, did it all for the Nuki this Nuki. Is, this is this is truly the Durst timeline. <laughs> so yeah, oh, wow. uh Kurt, uh, cards has been kind of a little wild since I opened it up to my friends just coming in and crashing my stream. So that's going to be going down for the next five streams. And then after that, I have a fuck ton of indie games that I have been keeping my eye on since like two years ago are now finally starting to come out. So I'm kind of excited to show those off. And then art streams when I get around to it, which looking at my rent, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to. The commissions are going to be needed. Right on. Edward Bosco, where can they find you? And what are you up to? You can find me at twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco and on Instagram, Twitter, and on TikTok at Ed Bosco VA. 
I'm doing a lot of stuff. I will keep you all posted. My streams could be getting really hectic in the near future. I'm trying to figure all that stuff out. Uh, I apologize for some of the delays and the cancellations and all the craziness that's been going on. But hopefully in October, we'll be able to get some consistency. Also, if you want to find out how I stuck Kai in a video game, stick around for the halftime show. I wasn't expecting it, but it happened. It happened today. I got a story. Stick around. Mm-hmm. Monty, where can they find you? And what are you up to? Oh, goodness me. I just want to point out that I accidentally m misspelled Otho the Shifter Rogue into Otho the Shitter Rogue. Yeah! <laughs> shitter! It's canon! I, I was trying not to the laugh. The Shitter Rogue. Fucking, yeah, I fucking love my that man. joke. Confirmed Sorry. Shitter. Yeah, I, 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 I want an intro, that's... but it's entirely from the perspective just... of Rear Jar trying to describe this. <laughs> Sorry, I just I just remember like way back during like episode uh... two or three. It was that early, the first yeah. Time. I shifted for the first time and someone in chat screamed, <laughs> Shitter! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, confirmed chat. Shitter. And I, it's been my Discord name ever since. <laughs> Love you, chat. Sorry. Uh, you can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me on Monty Glue on Blue Sky. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue and YouTube at Monty Glue. Uh, tomorrow should hopefully be more Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, it's It's... Man, I, I love the floor that you guys are on. It's just, it sucks that you're currently in what could be defined as the Hobgoblin Zone <laughs> at the moment. Well, uh, there's going to be a lot less when we're done. Yeah, and then uh, Friday, I apologize for canceling, but Friday should be more Final Fantasy. I'm a little sniffly, so streams have the chance of potentially, it's Autumn, man. Autumn's kicking my ass. Uh, and then Monday uh, should potentially be some Mass Effect, if not something else, but we'll keep you posted on that one. Uh, beyond that, you can find me on all the places I mentioned. Jazz hands. Might do an unboxing stream, actually, because I ordered in some more minis that I need. And have to try and hide my expression because I'm looking for a very specific one. But uh, I have some minis on order. But yeah, that's me. Right on. Uh, as for me, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, uh, Blue Sky, and Tumblr at Distortion Devil. Uh, I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. I've been working my way through Yakuza Like a Dragon. That's going to be happening, uh, I almost said tomorrow. I forgot what day it is. Uh, well, that's we going to be happening not Mario on Kart. What year is Saturday, it? Saturday. Uh, Saturday, right before uh, another session of Baldur's Gate 3 uh, right here on twitch.tv slash uh, the unexpectables where last session a very funny thing happened less than five minutes into the <laughs> oh, five minutes yes. into the it was session, oh. it will last the whole campaign I don't I don't regret it for one second I don't I have your back I every, think you were every, justified everybody who's yelling at me in the comment section how does it feel to be wrong um, anyway true. I got his back uh yes so that's happening on saturday sundays i'm playing through uh deus ex human revolution uh i feel like we're getting close to the end of the dlc here maybe and then we'll be moving on to the end of the game here uh been having an absolute blast going back through the game and then I, i'll be playing mankind divided for the first time all right yeah uh also check out my dm's guild where i release fifth edition content including the a Geomancer Spellbook. A bunch of Earth-themed spells in there for your butt. And I will also be releasing probably early next month, it's going to look like, because uh, I'm busy. <laughs> uh, the Fulgermancer Spellbook, which is uh, a bunch of lightning spells. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, but yes... Uh, other than that, this episode was brought to you in part by Die Hard Dice. Oh god, Die I don't have them! Die Hard Dice! What the oh. fuck? Sorry. You hear that quality? You hear that quality? I heard a thunk. That was the door. That's the sacred <laughs> chamber upon which I store my Die Hard Dice. <laughs> and my Die Hard Dice accessories. <laughs> they got spooky dice, I'm sure. For the spooky it's month. Spooky dice? They have uh, 
I know they have like some wraith dice and stuff like that, some really cool ones. Mm. I have some ice wraith ones that are really, really neat. There's probably some spooky ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can check out for yourself at Die Hard Dice. They have an Autumn Court dice set. Sorry, I just wasn't <laughs> <nice. laughs> It's 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 aggressively autumn. You too can uh, gawk at dice at dieharddice.com and you can purchase some as well. If you use the code UNEXPECTABLES, you can save 10% on your order when you shop at dieharddice.com. Uh, also pick up our Lies Aspect Dice, the official collaboration between the Unexpectables and Die Hard Dice. There's so, there's so many cool... There's more dice! There's there's more since the last time I checked. There's like all these these cool new ones. It's almost as if Die Hard Dice constantly comes up with new designs, accessories, and items for you to enjoy. Purchase at your leisure. It's crazy. These are so cool. <laughs> oh. Look at you have, pumpkin you have five ancient minutes. dice. <laughs> You can save 9% on, on the Pumpkin Ancient Dice Set. Sorry. Okay, I'm putting it away. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Indeed. Not as lost no, 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 track da, 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 da. anything track else thoughts. before we get uh, to Bishop's Yeah, I think we have uh, something else we have before Bishop's Well, we too. have a couple things. I'll also check out our store. We we released some designs, uh, including the workout design. It's been a lot of fun uh, seeing people posting their uh, their workouts wearing the workout design. Uh, you can also get it uh, not just on clothing, but on some accessories, some water bottles, a mug. Uh, all of that is on our spring store. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, but other than that, before we get to bits and subs, uh, it's it's the worst kept secret in, in all of TTRPG actual play shows. Um, but we are, we are going... <laughs> Maybe true. But we're also going back to our 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 October block, which means a certain show Oh shit, is we are back. Blocktober? What? Blocktober. Yeah. Blocktober, that's right. Minecraft streaming is now <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. with special no, but... guest Dikembe Matumbo. Whoa. Who why? That? <laughs> He's known for blocking. He's Never a mind. Very famous uh, I, see. <laughs> I got you, Mark. I appreciate you. Thank what? you, Bosco. Voice actor jokes. It had nothing to do with it. That was a sports <laughs> joke. <laughs> He's a basketball player. No, I'm with uh, Gaijin. You should feel bad. <laughs> See, I heard, okay. I heard, I heard block, and I thought like blocking for voice acting. I don't know. No, 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 I'm not a in my house. Back Connor, back. help. <laughs> what happens when a group of goblins are approached by a seasoned adventurer who needs help? with a very special job. Monty, could you roll the clip? I've traveled from Chultz to Waterdeep. I've plundered the secrets of ancient cities lost to time. I've killed a king with my own two hands. And I've stared gods in the eyes and lived to tell the tale. The people of Ten Towns call me Hero, but for all of my accomplishments it would have been impossible for me to do on my own. I've lost comrades, friends along my journeys, and what I ask of you now may be the most dangerous thing you've ever done. I need your help to save my home, but first, we must break it. It'll be the heist of the century. Oh my god, was that was that a <laughs> yeah, it certainly god was. Uh, a hint of things to come as 
Uh, yet another goblinoid joins uh, the group of goblins uh, for the adventures of Gobtober Thronebreakers. Holy shit. And you'll find out what that's all about in one week's time on the 7th. Yeah. Woo! I hope Theropod summons 50 frogs again. <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> I see. Right. Uh, uh, but yes, other than that, we got some fantastic bits and subs to keep us sure. afloat from Pizza the wonderful talks. people in our community. People such as Dr. Date Memes PhD, thank you for the 34 months. Diana Hatter, thank you for the three months of Prime Savage. Erwin Elf, thank you for the 38 months. Henry Skelleman, thank you for the 16 months of Prime Subbage. Zach Oduo, thank you for the 300 bits. Definitely need this show right now as I've caught the Varus and I'm laid the F out. Damn. Aww. You caught Varus? Make sure I you hope, avoid his cue. I hope you feel better. Connor. <laughs> it's okay. Connor, Thornton 6000. Also, <laughs> Connor, you have five minutes, so you might have to skip messages. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Mud Martin, thank you for the 40 months. The Drifter of Time and Space, thank you for the 13 months. Uh, Amudi Moogle, thank you for the 12 months, Kupo. Uh, Drifter of Time and Space, thank you for the 10 gifted subs to the community. Bill MSU, thank you for the 40 months. Twitcher Barry, thank you for the 100 bits. Irish Katana, thank you for the 6 gifted subs to the community. Uh, as well as the 37 months of subbing. Aimless Tiefling, thank you for the 23 months. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 15 bits. Irish Katana, thank you for the 500 bits. Kigogi, thank you for the 500 bits. Lynn Raven, thank you for the 10 months. Vex West, thank you for the 7 months. Lord Commissar Manslaughter, thank you for the 100 bits. Raw Sodium, thank you for the 21 months. Darkstar Dara, thank you for the 30 months. Anonymous, thank you for gifting 3 tier 1 subs to the community. Elf Lord, thank you for the 34 months of Prime. Callum Draws, thank you for the 35 bits. Uh, Disco Tech Priest, thank you for the 38 months. Weed Pixie, thank you for the 20 months of Prime. Uh, Amtrax VA, thank you for the raid. Weed Pixie, thank you for the five subs gifted to the community. Death Destroy, thank you for the 30 months. Shmoogo, thank you for uh, Shmoogio, Shmoog thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, Turi Sauce, thank you for the 20 months. Uh, Cyrus Einsler, thank you for the 21 bits. McLovin, thank you for the 25 months. White Fang, thank you for the 39 months of Prime. Irrelevant, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Oz195, thank you for the 39 months. Booty Call and the Sugar Lumps, thank you for the 42 months. <laughs> Hippo Lobotomus, thank you for the 29 months. Crow the Immortal, thank you for gifting four subs to the community. Turbo Charged, thank you for the 100 bits. Dr. Chili Boom MD1988, thank you for gifting five subs to the community. Archduke Stinky, thank you for the 800 bits. <laughs> Aurelius, thank you for the 25 months. Ace Bounty, thank you for the 100 bits. And Morthrandor, thank you for gifting 21 subs to the community. Thank you so much. Alrighty. I just want to, we might have a bit more time because unfortunately Zero did have to get up. Ah. Well. Keep sending bits and subs then. Well, uh, so, so wait, can, wait. I <laughs> can I propose to chat the question I propose to you all? It will be very brief. I suppose. All right, so chat, tabletop game. Well-balanced army playing up your own individual character strengths or big three big fuck-off robots? <laughs> What's it going to be? Balanced army oh, or shit. giant robots? <laughs> Sorry, that's um, right. I forgot one thing. Uh, there will be the uh, art stream this Friday. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah where we compile all the fan art that we received over the month. And I'm me and a couple people who join in are going to go over that. I see a bit of a bias in our chat for your army selection, Gaijin. Uh, apparently, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm on Team Big Robots, personally. Robot. I'm a chick, and I just, I, by default, dig giant robots. Chicks uh, dig. I didn't realize that was a requirement. <laughs> Sagely <laughs> nod. Good reference. Thank you. <laughs> Coop was an orc, and you can't convince me otherwise. Koopa? Coop, Coop. Coop is my, oh. Coop is my spirit animal. I, f I feel that. Oh my goodness. Strong disagree. Oh, I think I hear returning. All right. 
Well, with Zito back, I think it's time that we delve back into the unexpected, shall we? Get your cannons so ready, waiting. kids. I don't know. I guess so. No. One. So, when last we left our heroes, Gaius, the satyr fighter, Milo, the Azamar cleric, Otho, the shifter rogue, Kai, the human wizard, Iskan, the lizard folk druid, and a new found friend in Stragal, the Kenku wizard, the party once again were raked against the coals for their training with Rerjwa Ragnus. After trials and tribulations, the party eventually found their way to assisting Ea with her own efforts. After making their way into Ark Astoria, picking up some herb from an herb, the party returned with ingredients in tow. After making their way back inside the Delvarian stronghold, the party was alerted to a sudden scream coming from Ea within her apothecary. As the party draws their weapons and bursts into the scene, we return to the Unexpectables. What's this? All right. I would like everyone to roll me initiative, please. Dang it! Oh, oh no. let's go! I was really hoping it would just be like, yeah. No! <laughs> ah, I'm back! No! Uh, they didn't ask for help, fam. Sorry. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he rolled a six. Here so, I go! Which means I'm still below Xan. <laughs> oh, you know. <clears throat> All right. We haven't rested yet, correct? Nope. Cool. Not since training, yeah. Yeah. That's Anything fine. Anything you've spent during training? I don't even gone. care. I'm a, that's fine. I'm a fighter. I don't, I don't even. Care. I don't even care. That. I got I everything. Use no spells. I wasn't I, able to I, use. I, anything. I didn't hear no spells. Even furious. <laughs> oh so. Uh, and then we have Kai, and then we have Milo, and last. But certainly not least, we have E-Scan. And we oh, have... Oh, no, you can say oh, least. That's fine. Mr. Gall. Excuse me. All right. So, as you hear the scream and begin to run over through the sort of open yard area, eventually kind of finding yourselves running up the pathway leading to Ea's Apothecary, Gaius, you are the first to turn inside, weapons drawn. As you see a scene before you... You see Aya clutching closely to herself the griffin egg in one arm, and she is on top of her very large desk that she uses, like standing on top, pressed firmly into the wall, like leading as far back as she possibly can. And as you kind of pant and look down, you see what has her so terrified. As you see in the center of the room, 
currently eating away at the overturned contents of a Morton pestle, a basketball-sized beetle currently just chowing down on some of the herbs. Huh. Well. As the okay. rest of your companions rush up behind you, you all kind of fill in the door space, which is a set of double doors. And all of you see this scene as Aya is just like, ha, ah, ah, ha, just like up on this desk, press up against the wall, kind of slipping. You see papers are spilling onto the floor and contents pouring over as this beetle gives off an energy of not giving a shit. It is just eating the, the mushed up material in this Morton pestle on the ground and could not care less. Uh, what color, like, what, what, what is this, like, can you describe the beetle a little bit better? It is the definition of round. Uh, it has a black outer shell, beady, kind of reddish looking eyes, about eight legs, uh, two little antenna feelers, and has a, currently a moving mandible that is eating up, grazing at some of this stuff. I don't know if this would count as an animal, but can I perform and handle animal check? Sure, go for it. What would you like to do to it? Uh, I want to pull out a ration and lure it away. Okay, go ahead and roll a handle animal for me. 17. 17. Okay, you, you kind of do the with like a ration, and it seems to be more interested in the vegetation inside of the bowl, you get the sense of. As you do so, what do the rest of the party do? Dessa rushes past and actually sidesteps the beetle and runs over to Aya's side. But Aya is just like really like just kind of hiding and cowering from this thing. Is this a beetle that we have potentially seen before in any of our travels, independently no. or otherwise? It is. It is huge. You've never seen a beetle like this before. Are we operating in initiative order or? No. We're out of initiative. I, that was a red herring. I was fucking with you guys. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, what, no, well, I want to fight the beetle now. Well, n now knowing that this thing is more interested in the... Uh, the thing is now more interested in, like, the contents of the mor uh, mortar and pest uh, pestle. I want to uh, use the head of my axe to kind of, like, curl the... Uh, to use, like, the, the curl of the blade to kind of, like push it away so it follows after so it's like it gets a little bit of eat but then has to move to walk to get to keep up the pace so you're like pushing the morden pestle away yeah i'm like pulling it towards me with the curved part of my blade okay so he go can, ahead he can, he can still get it just like he has to work for it okay uh just to see what happens roll me a sleight of hand check here <laughs> I imagine we're all pressed against the door while while guys is just reaching in. Seven. <laughs> Seven. All right. <laughs> you reach out with your axe and you you kind of hook the Morton pestle and drag it, and some of the contents spill out. And the beetle like eats what remains. It's very Pac-Man like, and it's like it's it's kind of interesting to watch. But then you watch as the back flips open and these two wings, probably double this thing's length, split out and then it flies in the air towards the Morton Pestle. Immediately, Aya lets out another scream as she just uh -huh. jumps into the arms of Dessa, who just means like, oh shit, and she almost slams into the wall as this beetle lands and refolds the wings in. And Aya's just like, get it out of here, please just get it out of here, just get it out of here, get it out of here, get it out of here, please, please. And she's kind of like is it, terrified. I mean, is I'll, it poisonous I'll, or anything? I don't know. <sighs> Agent of Beetzelbub, be gone from this place. Be gone from this place with the cleansing. Is there? Guys, is there guys a, just does what he's doing. Just get there, leading him outside. Is there an open window? Uh, you guys have an open door. Okay. You know, love as is you an open drag door. the Morton pestle, it gets about halfway to outside the door, and then you realize the contents are empty and it's eaten everything inside. Okay, then I'm going to. Once again, with the handle animal, kind of like a attempt to like gently like either grab it or let it like sit on top of the flat end of the blade. Okay, uh, I'd say probably grabbing it will be better as it seems to be turning towards the desk where there are more herbs okay, laid out. Athletics, and it's just like ooh, the thing. You got it. Athletics. Here I go. Eighteen. <laughs> As disadvantage. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You grab it. 
and you hold it, and then once again, it, like, freaks out a little bit. Like, you have it grappled, but it flips out its wings and tries to, like, fly, and you have to kind of, like, like hold it down. It's like an RC helicopter trying to escape, Aww. and you're like, you're like, no! As you hold it, you currently have a beetle in your arms. Cool. I'm gonna just meander myself outside and find a window to let it outside. Okay. You kind of walk out, and there is a garden area, uh, and you just kind of, like, let it go, and it flies away. East guy's going to lean over to Milo. I think we know why they said no beetles for the hunt. Well, I guess so, but what is that about beetles specifically? I, I don't get it. Oh, oh. Aya, like, think... slowly relaxes, but seems to be trembling from toe to head. I think she may be scared of beetles. I don't know about you guys, but that was the weirdest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> oh. Oh. Aya, Aya, are you oh. all right? Sorry, I, I I didn't mean to scream. It's just I, I saw it inside, and 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 I oh, the episode the episode. Can, okay. Um, okay, I was about to say, can I do a religion check on that? Knowledge religion, yep. Thank you. Also, Otho's trying 12. to look to see where Rare Zerar might be. I was going to say, from. yeah. <laughs> you just hear, let's clear the door so that we don't... <laughs> just smash into the wall so we're not just run over. Perfect Rare Zerar shaped hole in the wall. <laughs> just bursts through like Spongebob. Also, nice one, Zito. You know, I was about to catapult. <laughs> I used to spell catapult. <laughs> no. Into a wall? Through. <laughs> yes, if I needed to. It's just you a just goofy runs. ass bug. Yeah. Milo, you've never heard of the name that she's saying. Mm -hmm. However, However, she seems to be like just like nudging things. She seems very trepidatious about things as she's kind of like catching her breath and calming herself down. She kind of looks and she goes, ah, Thank you, Gaius, for not killing it inside of the apothecary. We'd have to cleanse this entire space if you had. Um, I'm sorry. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for, for screaming. I, I, should, I should know better than to do that. Well, um, it's okay. It's just a little guy. Oh, oh sorry. Why do you, why are you so frightened of it? Oh, um, well, yet <clears throat> the Tetzelbub is the uh, celestial of of insects, specifically vermin and um, swarms. Uh, it's it's it's. Oh, I feel kind of faint. I need to sit down. You watch as she kind of struggles and sits down on one of the beds. Seems kind of like lightheaded a little bit. Is there like a water basin or something nearby? We can there bring is, her some yes. water. Okay. Yeah, like a uh, I want to bring her some water. Thank you, Iskan. She takes a drink. Otho will, Otho will remove his jacket and, and begin just like gently fanning her by flapping it up and down. Yeah, she seems okay. She actually checks over the egg to make sure the egg is okay. You get the sense she probably grabbed it in her, her panic and just was like, protect. Strigal's going to stand at the door and watch for Rear Girard just in case so we can give everyone a heads up what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> he just <laughs> runs through Strigal like a train. <laughs> you see a and cloud of feathers where Strigal was. Aya, Aya turns to you, Milo, and she goes, Metetzelbub is a, a, a celestial who was once under the umbrella of Yidia, but was brought into the sway of Necrecta. Um, though he still has love for my um, Medicina goddess I worship, and occasionally will send his agents to visit, as it were. <sighs> it usually brings forth disease and pestilence, which, oh, Milo, I might need your help in just cleansing. Just oh, that, that, safe. That's fine. Anything I can do to help? I've, I've just never heard of this before. Oh, it's... I'm surprised. Um, though I guess I suppose it only exists within the circles of Medicina worshippers. It's not a well-known fact, but the um, story goes that uh, Medicina and Betetzelbub were once friends, good best of friends. And then Necrecta fell in love with Betetzelbub and drew them onto their side, but Betetzelbub still loves Medicina and sends uh, creatures to check in on her. However, Betetzelbub was not the wisest of creature and does not know that they're influenced by Necrecta. It's uh, an old story. I'm paraphrasing quite a bit, but <sighs> it forebodes bad things, to say the least. Which is concerning, uh, considering there's a baby on the way. That's understandable. Is this the first time this has happened? Uh, no, they come in through the garden, I think, several times. So, 
is that are there any insects like that one that are native to this place or is that something from somewhere completely different beetles tend to be the most direct connection as Bethetsubub is depicted as a large beetle however um flies um maggots things like that those tend to be within the wheelhouse but it's not a natural creature of the region is it i don't know i suppose you'd have to ask Rajar about well, that's that. all right that's all right Did don't worry about it. We'll, if nothing else, we can look into it, and if we can, I'm sure Ashnar can... Oh, I'm pretty sure he can take care of it. Speaking of which, Stragal, uh. <laughs> you hear two footsteps, actually, two sets of footsteps, very heavy ones, as turning the corner are two Delvarian guards who are armed to the teeth, currently wielding curved blades. They turn the corner and immediately rush you, and they go... What has happened here? And kind of yelling towards your direction. Uh, Princess Aya was accosted by a large beetle. And we managed to, Master Gaius managed to bring the beetle outside and release it. It gave the princess quite a fright, but the situation is handled. So stand out of the way. You can investigate right, they, for yourself if you wish. They literally, the two of them, like, try to both go through the door at the same time. But then they <laughs> both get stuck and they're like, shit. And then one of them kind of pops forward and stumbles forward, almost slipping on the Morton pestle that is still on the floor. Uh, and they kind of walk over and they check on A and is like, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm okay. I did not mean to scream. Um, apologies. And the uh, two guards kind of scratch their heads in confusion. Money, real uh -huh. quick, I want to throw detect magic up and start looking for any sort of scrying or divination. You got it. As you flex out your hand and detect magic, you do detect some magic, very mildly, coming from the stack of papers mm -hmm. that you had given Aya. Uh, and as you kind of walk over and flip through them, it is that specific paper that seems to detail Ogrun's creation. So probably necromancy then? It is necro uh, yeah, necromantic. Specifically, um, the recipe itself comes off as necromantic. Is there anything else... No, it is just that and whatever your um, allies have on them. You do not detect any necro uh, necromancy on and the Morton Pestle or anything else. I don't know if this matters or not, Princess Aya, but um, right here, this page, I'm, I'm sensing some kind of necromancy coming from it, magic ways. Like, I don't know if it's connected or not, but if what you say is... If Bob actually is in coots with the Krekta, and the Krekta is the god of undeath, I, I wouldn't want this to be a beacon. Is that what you think? You would know better than me. I'm not wise to magic. I'd say probably Master Sigal would be most wise in that regard, or Erdon. But Strigal, what do you, what do you think? Well, I do have a passive understanding of necromancy. We have someone with a more encyclopedic knowledge. Kind of looks towards Kai. No, that's fine. No, I mean, give it your best shot. <clears throat> Master Kai, could it be possible that even just the slight replication of this information could have effect? I mean, if the notes themselves are magically enchanted and you start to try to decipher them, then yeah, it could have a effect of some kind, and by going through the process of trying to decipher it, there could be more effects. You see Aya's face go a little bit nervous, and you see, you actually hear the two guards kind of mutter something to each other. Can we uh, listen in? I'm going to say anyone who's not involved with the conversation can, and probably E-Scan. Uh, I was about to say! <laughs> yeah, E-Scan or Otho oh if you would like to. Do you want a perception? Certainly. You read lips, mother. I know I do. That's why I'm asking. Is this uh, am I making an active check or? This is an active check. Yeah. Okay. That's a 19. Ooh. Let's go, buddy. Uh, that's a 24. Oh wow! Jeez. Oh, Giant dome eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're like they extend forward right in East, front of the guard. Yeah, East Gun's face just between both of them, even though they're whispering. You, <laughs> like, it's like a parrot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You hear one of the guards kind of under his breath mutter to the other one, perhaps rumors of Aya dabbling in magic are not so poorly founded. And the other one jabs him in the side. He's like, oh, Ooh. kind of quiets himself down. Ooh. Aya walks over and she actually hands off the piece of paper to you, Kai, and she goes, I'm 
perhaps you should hold on to this then. I, I don't want to invite any danger to you, but given the stories you've told me and the things that you're facing, it'd probably be wisest that you either hold on to it. This does complicate matters, though. Uh, this is much Wait, more intense than I expected. Yeah, but how, how are you going to figure out the cure without the recipe in the notes? I've been turned it to memory. I'll remember. And if not, I can always ask you if I could take a look at it. Uh, if you'll uh, excuse you the interruption. Uh, yes, Master East Ken. Uh, what was exactly in that bowl there? The beetle ate it. Is that going to be a problem? Oh, she kind of walks over and picks up the bowl a little bit and kind of wipes it up. It was just a base. Um, I'm starting a simple salve. And she kind of walks over and picks up another piece of paper. The, like I mentioned earlier, the afflictions the children are facing are very unique. It's almost as if they're affected by five or six different common afflictions at once. I'm attempting to essentially cure those and then see what happens. A blended medicine might be able to help in some regards, but I don't want to just simply replicate your friend's work. And she holds up the recipe that you get the sense Augurin uses mm. to heal the children. Do you believe that all of these afflictions are magical in nature, or at least in their origin? The source of them could be magical, but the outcome is certainly medical. Um, that being said, you see her, she's still kind of like, you know, it's like when you have someone who's arachnophobic and you're a spider and they're still like on edge, kind of mm -hmm. keeping an eye out. You see her kind of look around a little bit and then she looks towards Dessa who puts like a firm hand on her shoulder. Uh, also, Strigal, you get the sense that even though Aya did scream, if Rajar is not in the area, he probably didn't hear it. But the guards probably did. I imagine he would have been here already if he heard mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, you get the sense that if he had heard it, he would be here by now. Uh, Aya does kind of look perplexed and nervous, and she looks towards the rest of you, and she goes, Maybe it's um, too much, but perhaps speaking to Erdan could help. I would like to know what he thinks or makes of this, um, especially given that on, um, uh, where is it? This one? No. Uh, it's, oh, that one, right there. Um, this one here mentions that your friend attempted to use a dispel magic spell, uh, to essentially stop uh, anything, as well as a curse a curse removal spell. I'm not wise to the ways of magic, but um, I would like to see what Erdan has to say about that. Perhaps he might have some more insight. Clearly it didn't work, or we wouldn't be in the situation. Indeed. Um, I guess I need that to means it's not a curse. Continue at this. You watch as she picks up the Morton Pestle and places it down. Um... Once you return, though, I, I feel as though I owe you some lessons in medicine making, and I honestly could use your help. Um, making these salves and these medicines will take away from preparations for um, Layla's birth, so I wouldn't mind some additional help. But um, again, I apologize for my nature and for screaming as such. It was unbecoming and irresponsible of me when um, you have no threats to life could have occurred. You have no need to apologize to us, Your Grace. We are just thankful that you are safe and that Master Gaius could valiantly uh, fell the foe by removing them from the situation. Fell nothing. I thought it was cool. My sister likes bugs, and so do I. Huh. <laughs> I mean, I like I like some bugs, like leeches. That's pretty cool. They are. The... That's a bug. Yeah. I think it's. It one of the few insects not corrupted. They help us in medicine. They actually, um, unlike other insects, they actually are under Medicina's um, yield, surprisingly, as well as certain species of um, maggots. But that um, is a whole lecture for another time. I apologize. No, no, it's, it's quite all right. We will go see what we can find out uh, as soon as we can. Of Assuming course. we are not needed elsewhere. I'm looking towards the group. Oh, do we have the things to deliver? Oh, did you get them? Uh, yes, of course. Kind of looks towards. Uh, I think Milo has them, right? Oh, Milo, Milo took them. them, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what was it? The, the supplies the stuff we bought. From oh, the right, right, right. Bag. 
Yeah, from the, <laughs> from the, weirdo. Tier, from the tier three oh. sub. Yeah, the tier three sub oh. guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I I really didn't like that guy at all. He just oh. passes off the materials. I've heard Dessa describe him as, and she kind of brings up both of her fingers and does air quotations a lot, but. He has been incredibly useful in getting me medicinal supplies from other countries, such as Chelstonia and and Hearthland. Well, I, I think if it were me, uh, definitely keep him at arm's length, if not 12. Oh, yeah. Rejar Ragnus hates him. I think that if he ever approaches, that he'll turn into mulch. She kind of shudders at the thought. But I've begged him to keep him alive. He is, it feels kind of bad, but he is quite useful. I've never really spoken to him, but, um... Probably you know. best to keep him as a business relation. That's how I see it, though occasionally he slips in notes. I'll make sure I don't have any this time. She kind of folds through and goes through very meticulously each herb that seems to have been packaged with just so much care. Like an ASMR packing video where it's oh like everything God. is meticulous and perfect. Uh, oh, incredible. This is a stalker. <laughs> She actually picks up the Morton Pest and goes, oh, this is a fine piece. Oh, Milo, you should keep this. Oh, oh all right then. Um, if, if you think I could be of help. Of course. I actually was going to show you how to make bandages when you have time. Um, and the rest of you... Does the big oh. thumbs up. Re-gifting a Morton Pest. <laughs> <laughs> Milo, uh... You can absolutely tell him that. <laughs> Milo, why don't you stay and help Aya, and we'll go talk to Aradan? That was kind of a thought. If there's divine magics going on here, it might be best I stay, just in case yeah. another beetle shows up. If you wouldn't mind helping me cleanse, I have some... She kind of, like, goes through some bottles. I have some holy water. Um, perhaps you could help me by sprinkling some of this on the entrance and in the places where the beetle was. Absolutely. This Thank is you, water Milo. blessed by the clerics of Clorox. And this is blessed <laughs> by Raid. <laughs> the all the all powerful god, Mr. Clean. Yeah. Oh. Alright. So is Milo uh -huh. you stay behind with Aya while the rest uh -huh. of you guys are gonna go talk to Erdan. Yup. Okay. Uh, as we walk, um get a quick uh scene with every everyone who's walking with us, but yeah. specifically towards Kai. Absolutely, go for it. Uh, Master Kai. Uh, yeah, what's up? I can't help but wonder if this uh, issue with the children, that this plague that afflicts them is magical in nature, cannot be removed via... Uh, well, it cannot be simply expunged by a remove curse or some sort of dispelling of magic. I have heard of spells that uh, use... Uh, iron dust, as it were, to create fields of anti-magic. They are far more powerful than anything I could conceive to cast, but there are those in Hearthland who might be able to assist. I mean, anti-magic is probably going to be stronger than most removal magics, unless you're a really powerful wizard, so it's an interesting theory. I, I was thinking that maybe a combination of magic and medicine. We got those notes where uh, what's his face? The one who had the living spell book. He was essentially breaking down spells to their most basic components and trying to remake them and isolate aspects of them. So maybe there's a way that we don't use just a spell, but aspects of multiple spells and medicine. Because if traditional spells won't work, there is the theory that you can kind of make one. Uh, yes, such things are possible, albeit very dangerous at times. Low as I am to try and deduce the interworkings of Orestes' lung, these children's lives are in danger, and if nothing else proves fruitful, then you might be right, Master Kaisar. Well, I'm willing to ask everybody here if they know anything, but at, at a certain point, we have to try something unique, different, I don't know, out there. I, Sorry, what were you going to say? Well, I don't know that much about magic, but if the idea is that we come up with a way to treat their symptoms medically and then magically find a way to stop more symptoms from happening would that solve the problem that's kind of my thought process if the magic won't remove the symptoms the medicine might 
but we're still going to need something magical, whether it's Strigal's idea of anti-magic or either finding a spell or creating a spell that will be able to get rid of the cause rather than just the symptoms. No, no, you, you, wonder... are, you are right. I, I have heard of people's getting afflicted by some spell that would cause their constitution to become frail, and even though the curse was removed, they were not in a position to be healed beyond that, uh, being starved or uh, dying of thirst, even though the curse was no longer upon them. You are right to treat the symptoms as well as the as well as the I wonder I wonder if in that way their condition is not unlike that of the king. The king? Uh well uh, yeah, the, I'm assuming you mean the, the king of Eastonvale, yeah. yeah. The previous king of Eastonvale. I am he afraid you have me at a disadvantage. A yeah, he seemed to make a deal with uh Wormtongue and my guess is it, whatever happened to him stemmed from that and he just trying to get tried to kept get more and more of whatever power he was given. I don't think it's exactly the same situation, but it could be similar. His condition... His cure isn't the same. His condition was something that tied him innately to his uh, subjects, and he does air quotes. Hmm. So this is kind and of my thought, and this is the... Oh, sorry, brother. Go ahead. In order to break that connection, we had to administer a, a quite hefty potion. And sort of a permanent solution. That's kind of what I was going to mention. I, as much as I hate to say it, if Ogren was created using necromancy and the life force, which I've been told many times is what you need to do, necromancy, was taking, taken from those children... The only way to maybe put it back is, well, I don't think I need to say it. Wait, you think Agrun is causing the curse? Perhaps his creation. his creation. His creation did, which I think we've pretty much all confirmed, but even if we cure the kids, there may be no way to fully undo it without undoing him and putting back what was taken. I, I don't want to do that, but that is a nasty truth that we might have to confront sooner rather than later. I think he's prepared for that if his demeanor is anything to go by. Still, we will look for alternatives if possible. Yeah. We should talk I, to this mage. Maybe they have a better idea. As you all are walking, you actually see turning around the corner of part of the stronghold uh, Audron's wife, actually. Oh. Uh, she seems to be kind of just gently walking, uh, which seems to have maid servants with her. Uh, you remember that her name was Layla, specifically. Uh, and as she catches you, she goes, Ah, good day to you. Well, ma'am. To you I as heard, well, Lady a Layla. I had, uh, I heard quite a commotion towards the apothecary. Ah, well, a small problem. I see. A really big beetle. Well, that would do it. Certainly not the first time it's occurred. Luckily, this time, without earshot of my brother-in-law, which is good. Lest we have to repair yet another wall. <laughs> she <laughs> kind of laughs and smiles widely. She goes, It is nice to have such esteemed guests coming from such far reaches, especially those who had competed and succeeded at such a difficult challenge of, as the Grand Hunt. Your words are heartening. <laughs> Indeed, it is likewise... Very fine to be among such esteemed company ourselves. My father did plenty trade with Easton Vale. Uh, not as much as the larger countries, as I'm sure you can imagine, but the logging and apples there are something of notoriety. Glad to hear that it is now in more good hands. Hearing about the horrible curse laden upon it was certainly of deep concern. I do worry about the other nations afflicted by this ash plague that you speak about. Do you happen to think of, do you happen to believe there are the, uh, of other ones that are mostly affected by it? I heard from other members of court and visitors who come by, merchants and such, as I myself am the master of coin of Delvaria, um, rumors that the 
places under wing of the, um, I believe they call them blight wing, um, have come under thrall of some sort of deep and darkened curse. Of course, this could also be the words of story crafters wishing to make their patrons hang upon their tongues, but I digress. Hearing that your foe is of a similar nature, I cannot help but think about it in more seriousness. If I may, which lands have you heard tale being covered in that darkness? Portions of Iasulai, and then curving up beyond to the northwest, beyond, cutting through the land. Entire smaller countries completely missing, is what I've heard. Missing? Stuck in quiet. Again, I think it is just simply stories meant to bring in fear, but it is worth considering. I apologize. I did not mean to frighten you if that, that was not my intent. It's simply that I wish to show a solidarity and concern for your quest, as it seems to be quite a large one. Oh, uh, no. Uh, thank you for the information. Um, he kind of looks awkwardly towards the back, uh, towards the rest of the group. We are actually trying to find uh, solutions to uh, any problems related to the uh, plague. So uh, every information, uh, every bit of information we get is helpful. Uh, thank you. Of course. Considering the plague has been about for at least a year now, I'm certainly surprised that no one else has come to speak counsel with Aya, given her expertise. I must really? say, I, I feel quite secure in my birth, given that she, her presence here. Well, that is because the Ash Plague did not affect Hurtlin. I'm certain that if it did, they... Hurtlin would have been uh, sending as many people as they could to get in contact with her. Of course, of course. Anyway, I should not keep you. I apologize. Um, Actually, there was something. Uh, would you like to join us for dinner tonight? We'll uh, ridge back there. <laughs> oh, Redmond. Rib uh, Redmond. Um... Razorback Redman, do you mean? Uh, right, 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 sorry. What's Sometimes, the name? he occasionally joins us for matters of um, specifics, but since you are all from different nations, I believe mixing in a more formal matter would probably be wise. I am curious to hear of your ventures, and if this threat has any chance of appearing within Delvaria or our sister nations, we should probably know about it in great detail. Uh, I... If Far be it for me to decline a royal invitation. Of course. Plus, my husband is quite interested in you all, um, though he's busy at the moment. Um, and if you wish, I could uh, consult Redmond and see if he wishes to join. He's not one to turn up a tankard of ale, as it were, in finery. It would be good to talk to the crown prince. We haven't really had much one-on-one -on -one time since we've arrived. Understandably so. He is quite busy, after all. He is, yes. And also, given our first meeting was simply that of formality, and I feel as though the ease of dinner and perhaps some fine discussion could lead to bridging gaps, I feel, that may have been brought about by my brother-in-law. And again, I apologize for him. He can be rather rigid. <clears throat> we are learning to adapt. I see. Uh, anyway. Would you happen to know, perchance, where the uh, royal court sorcerer is? Oh, Erdan. Ah, uh, if you go past me and you turn on the right, you'll hear flowing water. That is his abode. Be careful not to touch anything. He's uh, particular. <laughs> One thousand thanks for your assistance, of course. And we will see you tonight. Of course. You humble me. And she kind of gives a very polite... She doesn't bow, obviously, because she kind of shouldn't. And she gives yeah. a very polite head tilt, and then her two maidservants also deeply bow towards the rest of you. And Happiness and health to you and your baby. Thank you. Happiness and health to you as well. As she Until tonight, on. Your Highness. Of course. And do not feel the need to bring anything. It, we are hosting you, of course. Of course. As, as the two of you continue on, you find yourself... Uh, following the directions, and sure enough, you hear the sound of flowing water as you see uh, a set of very elaborate, I'm just going to say it, very extra double doors carved in a dragon motif on either side. And flanking these two sets of double doors are two fountains that seem to be pouring out 
like steamy water and the mouths are that of 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 a dragon specifically pouring out into like a cupped dragon hand bowl that seems to flow elsewhere are the doors open they are closed are they unlocked i guess is the better question <laughs> uh you can check i would love to just shoulder check it okay <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to attempt to open the door, and if it is locked, I will need to know this. Okay. Uh, Otho, uh, as he reaches for the door handle, Otho will clear his throat. <clears throat> I will freeze. He mimics knocking on the door with his hand. I will knock on the door. You hear some sounds of fumbling <laughs> and the, like a movement of cloth. And you wait for about, like, two minutes, and then you hear the door... <laughs> and filling up the frame in their live form with immaculate robes, you see the sorcerer Erdan. I believe his last name was Erdan Rosal, was his name. He kind of gives a shrewd stare kind of towards you, and he kind of looks around and he goes, Having a tour? Uh, no, we actually came for your uh, expertise. Uh, A.S. told us to check in with you, so do you have ah, a minute? Of course, I have plenty of time to entertain foreigners. Come on in. And you watch as he waves his hand and the both of the doors just fly open. Inside okay. of the chamber, you see a large, like a huge donut-shaped desk. Um, it's like a large circular table. And it has a chair in the middle where the hole is, and the entire thing is covered with piles of papers and other things, as well as behind him is probably the saddest, like, wizard's library you've ever seen. Uh, there's more papers than books in this room, and specifically, uh, it compared to the Great Library of Hearthland, it seems like a, a slight, like a child's collection at best. However, other shelves seem to contain magical bits and bobs and smaller shelves labeled and Kai and uh, Sir Gall, you're able to notice it. These very beautifully immaculately made like wooden shelves have these tiny drawers, each labeled with spell components specifically. There's also just a lot of dragon imagery, specifically tapestries of dragons. There's a chandelier that just is a dragon's tongue coming out and then splitting off into candelabras that hold candlesticks. You see a large dragon like mouth statue in the corner of the room that probably looks like if it opened could probably hold like a fireplace or something. However, it just sits cold in the corner of the room. However, as Erdan walks over, you watch as he kind of snaps his fingers and just disappears and reappears sitting on the chair in the middle of the desk and kind of intertwines his draconic red hand with his humanoid hand and leans forward and goes, So what inquiry do you have for the Grand Sorcerer of Devaria? Charles going to try not roll to roll his eyes, but just kind of motion Kai go forward. Kai will roll his eyes, and he will present the he scroll. Oh, you don't like more formalities. I could be like the other host that you've had. If that would suit you. I'd just rather we cut to the chase, which is, I would really appreciate it if you took a look at this. And he's going to put the scroll on the table, I suppose. All right. As you place the scroll on the table, he unravels it and takes a peek. And you can see he definitely wears his emotions on his face as you see the journey through this and goes, Now, isn't that interesting? And what am I to I do? I going to look this? very. Ex we were hoping you could help us decipher it. We've got yes. Aya looking at some notes about the medicine that could possibly be used to cure what this created. We're hoping that maybe you could give us a more magical solution that we can combine with it. Hmm. Interesting. Let me see. And he is going to roll an Arcana check. Can I, I help him? him? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, now I know how Gaijin got us confused. How interesting. Yeah, there you go. 
We, in our uh, research into the square eggs of the earth, uncovered something of a similar nature, however less darkened. This appears to be a transcript from a manual of golem creation. Sorry, did you say square eggs? Yes, that's what the Davarians called them. Are you aware of the great mage vaults? Uh, yeah, actually very well aware. Oh, yeah. well, isn't that refreshing? The square eggs of the earth, as they are colloquially known, are the great mage vaults. Vaults as they were containing ancient arcane secrets or monstrosities that come out. One such one, we recovered a manual similar to this. However, the ingredients of which pertained only simply to clay. This one seems more dark in its intent. Its design seems a little bit more baleful, as it were. I'm interested to know why you only have a part of it and not the whole thing. Uh, these were the notes that were given to us, and this was the specific one that had to deal with the necromancy involved. I see. Yes, necromancy is an interesting subject matter, that which you are astutely interested in, I've been informed. Your foes are no yeah, enigma I've kind of to us. It. Of course. Again, I don't doubt your ability. You are a practitioner wizard, and you as well. He kind of nods towards Eustergal of a hearthland variety. I enjoy foreign spellcasters. Your expertise in specific areas is very illuminating, to say the least. Please sit. And you watch as he kind of waves his fingers, and like one by one, chairs on the edge of like the room kind of come out and place in front of the circular desk. I have a question. Oh, so Kai will cool hold and back mysterious a... and mystical. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kai, yes, Kai will hold back a sigh, but look at Stragal. Mages really be out here pondering one orb and calling themselves a wizard. He'll take a seat. Gaius, you were gonna say something. I had a, I had a question. Which among us had the key, the lockbox with the key? Um, uh, I think Otho. I think, was, Otho. I think it was Otho that had it. That does sound familiar. Yes. Okay, because I was about to say if he's like mentioning the vaults, I'm like maybe we should show him that. But whatever. Hmm. Do we want to show our hand? They, well, I, I've had Kai not specifically show our hand until we maybe learn a little bit more, and then maybe we drop mm. that on them. Well, I'm, That's I'm what just I was thinking. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Well, guys has no fucking horse. I like the, the, I like the idea. Magic. I just don't think we should do it right. Yes, I don't think yeah. we should do it right this yeah. second. Yeah. Not until we you, get a little bit more out of him. As you all sit down, I'll re-describe this character. This man seems to be kind of in his probably like late forties, maybe. Uh, he has, like, kind of pulled back hair, a widow's peak, but out of one of his foreheads comes a large draconic horn that kind of curls back. His eyes are yellow and have that same sort of draconic look. And you notice that a couple of his teeth seem slightly elongated. Notably, one of his hands is that of a draconic, like, hand. Like, it's humanoid, but it has, like, the scaling and the claws of a dragon. And he is wearing robes incredibly loosely and comfortably, almost like a reverse Snuggie. So like, you know, a robe, but it's like <laughs> big enough that it's more like leisure wear rather than practicality. Um, you also notice that he does have a tail that seems to curl around the foot of his chair. The pieces of papers you see piled up just seems to be a bunch of eclectic, like, spell knowledge. Um, nothing you can really pick out. It just seems like, it's like just a pile of math equations with no real clear indication. Um, and there seems to be a lot of opened letters and, you know, crude scrawled notes as well to look into. However, as he kind of, you all sit and he leans down, he looks up and he goes, refreshments, you're of a refined taste. I do not mind going into my personal um, stashes, as it were. Oh, well, if you don't mind. Certainly. And you watch as he kind of sways his hand and you watch as a small compartment in like the shelf, like the spell component shelf, swings open as there's a secret compartment that's actually not part of it. And inside ah. you see a myriad of bottles. Uh, and he brings, drawer. he's got a booze drawer and he <laughs> leans it over and he places it on the table and brings out uh, glasses for anybody who'd like uh, a pour of a nice vintage. I'm he's assuming this... Past. 
he scan you hold up your hand he kind of leans back in the chair and reads closely and places it down and then he actually pulls out from like this organized chaos uh another stack of papers which he kind of pushes towards you and he goes these are the notes I have on the manual that we found. However, this manual that you seem to have an excerpt from seems to be a bit more... I'm just going to say it. Evil is probably the vibe I get from this. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. Why? It's interesting. Because usually when these books are used... They don't really stick around. As in the books themselves or the pages th in themselves uh, remove, are removed somehow, or are they destroyed? They are consumed in magical flames upon creating the recipe there within. This manual we have not used. We have stowed it away for trade. However, these are the notes I have on it. It's worth quite a pretty penny, but upon usage, they're meant to disappear. If, if I may ask. And he kind of goes and he pours the wine for each of you. This particular manual of which you have this excerpt, was it used? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. I see. And yet, you have a note about it. Yeah, this is the notes of the person who we presume used the book. I see. Interesting. It seems as though, looking upon this page and seeing that it is reeking of necromantic energy, someone has gone to great lengths to make it exist in perpetuity, which is rather fascinating and honestly quite frightening. Why would one make a cake recipe, recipe immune to being destroyed? To be able to make the cake more than once? Precisely. Oh, gods, I love smart company. Oh, it's been so long. What is your name, by the way? I like you. You're intelligent. Uh, my name is uh, Kai. 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 Lovely name. Yes, exactly. Someone Thanks. has gone to painstaking lengths to make sure that this recipe, or perhaps the means by which to create this golem, simply does not go away. It was a security measure put in place by the ancient ancestors of the Great Mage War, no doubt to allow their recipes to be used against them. But it seems as though whoever you are dealing with has cleverly created some means of making it stick around. The, the question is, how do we undo what was done? There are side effects to using that book. <laughs> Not usually. Unless someone's altered the recipe ever so slightly. Which, given the necromantic nature of this, tell me, this individual you received this information from, you claim to be helping them, yes? Kai's going to kind of look at the group and then nod yes. How do you know that, well, they don't intend to do something like this again? Uh... I guess you could say that after talking to them for an extensive period of time, it would go completely against their nature. Interesting. Hmm. He places down the piece of paper, sits back and thinks. So, there are side effects that's affecting children. That which you petitioned aid from Aya. Such lasting effects are not too uncommon and worsened still by the presence of the Ash Plague. My compatriots had some interesting theories about potentially using maybe anti-magic or <laughs> uh, certain spells to get rid of it in combination with the medicine. Is that something you think that might work or do you have a different theory of how this can be fixed permanently? Let me, let me ask you a question. I, perhaps a question could answer your question. He looks towards all of you. When a piece of wood is burnt down to simple charcoal, would a cure restore it back to what it was? Uh, magic could theoretically do that, but not naturally, no. Precisely. The question is... Well, several questions, actually. 
They used the recipe, the children became sick, and the creature that came about is no longer around, correct? Uh, no, the creature that came about is still very much around. I see. Even casting it back wouldn't change anything, because the cataclyst caused the effect. It's not irreversible, but it is solvable. Hmm. Oh, I love conundrums. I digress. Do you know about necromancy magic and its effect on the weaves of reality? More than anyone would like me to, yes. Then you know about the balance, more or less, yes? Uh, yeah, I know that the energy has to come from somewhere, the life force has to come from somewhere, and whatever you use it for, someone else is going to pay the price. Precisely, but do you know why that occurs? The law of equivalent exchange? I'm not sure. <laughs> what a silly phrase. No, there is no equivalent exchange. There only is and is not. Um, Mr. Otho, may I borrow your wine glass? And he just kind of snatches it from you, Otho, as you've only been able to take just a slight sip, which, very nice vintage, better than what you had at, like, the party. Mm -hmm. It's, this guy, this guy knows wine. He hoards However, good he, stuff. He takes your glass away and places it on the table. With a wave of his hands, all the pieces of paper surrounding it kind of reapply themselves to the stacks around. And he kind of gestures for all of you to look. What is inside of this glass? Wine. Particularly Precisely. nice vintage. Thank you. Very fine vintage. And what else is inside of the glass? Air. There are, are we talking air. scientifically? Because air, molecules, atoms, electrons, protons, like how deep do we want to get? Air, <laughs> precisely. We don't see it, but we know that it is present there because the wine exists in a space where it must exist, precisely. You understand? Now, let us say yeah. I spill some of this wine. You watch. <laughs> oh, those ears like <laughs> pin back to his head. He gets the sweats. He's about to cry. Or perhaps someone partakes of it, and he offers it back to you, Otho, to take a generous gulp. <sighs> yeah, he he does, in <laughs> fact, uh, he he writes himself, and he takes a, a generous sip. You watch as he takes back the glass, and the glass is now less filled, and he goes, now what occupies this glass? Less wine and more air. And Otho spit. Perhaps. Do you, do you spit in your wine, sir? Don't mind me, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> guys, guys just slumps over, just like But Gaius is like, I'll go back to being over here now. Yeah, yeah guys, guys just like, talk. Gaius shrinks in his fucking seat. He's like, I have no horse in this <laughs> race. I believe Mr. Mr. Agni was referring to the residual saliva that's on my lips. I suppose so. There's always other things that can slip in through the cracks when magic's involved. Demons and devils tend to partake in such things. You're not entirely incorrect. However, you see now that most of the glass is now air and less water. The space has been filled with something else because there was a vacuum or a void in which needed to be filled. Consider that this spell that this individual had cast is like drinking wine. These children and the village and surrounding were a balance of life and death. Life being the wine and death being the air. Your compatriot partook a little bit of their life, and in doing so invited the void to be filled by death. That now permeates. So how do we refill what has been taken? We punch there has to be an outside in the source. Stomach. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Well, we have to refill the glass. Exactly. We cannot take what he has consumed, as it has been taken, but you must refill it. Essences of life can assist in this fact. That is why as medicine can work. Yidia is an entity of life. Many of the good-natured gods are, while many of the negative gods are, as stated, negative. They bring in the negativity, pain, suffering, and other such fun things. When the void of goodness is filled by the void of darkness, balance is not even a factor. It's simply what is and what is not. So... We must oust the darkness and bring forth back, and he uncorks the bottle and refills it back up to half, specifically what it is. Now, I suppose the question is, what happens when only one thing exists within a space? 
Well, if there's no room for the other. Precisely. And then what happens? The balance is all thrown off. The balance doesn't exist. If my lovely friend, and he pushes the wine glass towards you, though, could finish off his glass of wine. I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> gift dragon in the mouth, chug, thank chug, you. Chug, 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 chug. All right, Otho, you drink the vintage. You take your time a little bit. Then he watches Erdan oh, yeah. and is like, hurry up, come on. <laughs> We're all there for 15 minutes just watching him. <laughs> dip this ruining my look. analogy. I mean, I mean guys, if, look if says, you want, Don't. guys can just slam his. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> As Otho's <laughs> gently drinking, guys just guys slam his. It. <laughs> he just grabs the glass, he pulls it back. There is no wine, there is no life, and there is only void, and there is only death. Now, and he uncorks the bottle and begins to pour it, and it begins to spill over actually onto the table balance as you say does not exist however it is wanted too much of one or the other will cause it to fill over as it were if this wine were death it spills over into other things these pieces of paper the table staining them am i making sense perfectly clear actually yeah indeed for what damage can be done with necromancy must be restored through life. However, this particular nature spilled over. It took all life, and in doing so, affected life beyond itself. It is not so much a domino effect as it is a proxy effect. Lichdom follows such a similar notion. Have you heard of regions where liches reside and what happens to them as time goes on? I've actually, yeah, I've been trying to figure out about liches. Liches, when they are created, nothing happens. It simply affects their own mortal coil, connects them to an object, something lifeless. However, the more time they preside, the more they live, the less other things live. Entire villages wiped off the mat due to the fact that children can no longer be born in their presence. As any vitality or life spills over into the lich's void. Wait, so you're saying that the longer a lich presides in the living mortal realm, it just continues to consume energy more and more the longer it's around? Where do you think eternal comes from? It does not come from nothing. It is a void that must needs be filled. And life is what it needs. So It is indiscriminate. It will go for anything. And the easiest thing to go to, go to is the thing that is closest. So you're saying instead of thinking it like a glass that's filling, think of it more like a jug that's pouring? That Precisely. the life tries to fill the hole? Precisely. See, you're smart. There is an oh. equivalency. In a way. However, say your children is this wine glass that your friend has so astutely drank upon. If it is being siphoned, and you watch as he pours the wine glass in, perhaps the death is a stopper, preventing more from being filled. It must be lifted. And through that, you need magical means. A combination of medicine and magic, I think, will see you through. However, you will need very powerful magic to do so. An ingredient of great power, of great life, specifically. An ingredient of life. Indeed. Is you might a specific think, ingredient? Perhaps. You might think, in your mind, a sacrifice. A, a sacrifice of life, but that is, in fact, a sacrifice of death. But things of magical natures, uh, unicorns, celestials, they are embodiments of life. Demons Wait, and devils embodiment what about a birth? Death. What about a birth? A birth could work, yes. I was, you're not actually flying. I was thinking the same thing, actually. Yeah, kind of. The, the, the idea crossed my mind. We did just hear it. But how would we even do that? Uh... Theoretically, we would have to be in close enough proximity for that event to take care of the other event, so they would have to come with us. I heavily but doubt that, would work. that that is happening. 
<laughs> you intend to kidnap Lady a Layla. And no, 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 not kidnap. I mean, maybe explain the situation and go, hey, as long as you don't mind the location, this would really help out other kids. Hmm. And you do Perhaps. understand Perhaps. if something Perhaps. goes wrong, this could prevent or this could spark a war. Gaius is doing the fucking like Apollo Justice, like finger to his forehead pose, sitting <laughs> up in his chair. Wait a minute. Not so much the kid, but what about the bird? It's a phoenix, isn't it? Even if it dies, it just I regenerates mean the... itself. Not quite. I mean, you could use the griffin egg, but who knows when that thing's going to hatch. I, but we know this birth is going to be happening soon-ish. You know, I've heard stories and legends that the umbilical cord is a reality-bending item, a tether between non-existence and existence. Perhaps that would be what you would need. Mm. Yeah, so if you get three can of them, we use something that comes... Monty, I really don't, I really hate to be that guy, but can I incite this person? Yeah, sure, go for it. <sighs> 11. Was that 11. a jab? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, I didn't want to stop in, in mid-explanation and be like, oh, can I incite this person? He seems to be like, first of all, this man doesn't seem like he's a carer. He doesn't seem to care. He seems to be like, he's less inclined, he's not less interested in your, your issues, more in the solution. Um, he seems to be genuinely theorizing right now. He doesn't seem to have ill intent. He seems to be like problem solving with you. So okay. here, was... here's the question: Is can, can can an aspect of the birth be enough to be the life that counteracts the death? I mean, that's or a does the for act me, have yeah. to happen? Oh boy! Would it last long enough? That's the other question too. You need a more permanent solution. Again, it does not have to be simply a birth. I've heard that unicorn horn, dragon scales, things of such long livid or eternal creatures can lead to an influence of life. Hmm. You don't I have to I have any so dragon far cousins, off do you? Of my theory. Wait, I'm confused. You said eternal doesn't come from nothing. Indeed. So what makes a unicorn different from a golem? They tend to have friends in higher places. Their creation comes from something that can fill their void with life. Gods, specifically. Same as why demons and devils have the same thing, only theirs is a negative energy, as it were. Dragons are ancient, said to be the source of all magic, and that source can be a balance as well. I mean, I would know. <laughs> he sips some of his wine. For necromancy in specific, when life is taken, or transferred, or removed from the wine glass, what judges how much life needs to be taken for a necromantic spell to take effect? That is an interesting theory, and one I do not know. However, it seems as though your companion there might have a better thought to it, or perhaps more available research of which to study. Strength is one thing yeah. I could guess, or theorize, or hypothesize, rather. The scale of the intended uses. Strigal's just going to be kind of chewing on it, somewhat disgruntled, not wanting to trust this person, but, but trusting their information. Would it be possible to bring the kids here? You know from Ogden I don't that think... would be possible, yeah. Yeah, you I don't say think... that again. Sorry. You you know from Ogryn that would not be possible. Would not be possible. Yeah, okay. No, they wouldn't. Even if he came with them. Yeah. No, they okay. wouldn't. They wouldn't survive. Hmm. Not even if we teleported. It's not physical. A birth is not physical, but something that manifests or perhaps represents, like I mentioned, the umbilical cord. Might work. So there are flowers the as well. Sport. I have a stupid <laughs> suggestion. Oh, I love stupid. Let's hear it. Would not the power of someone's faith be eternal? If made into a physical form of some way? Albeit fire. Looks over to the rest of the party. Yeah, we're dealing it's with hypothetical theory. and theoretical magics at this point. Dangerous territory, to be certain, but also miraculous in nature. I Besides, do not believe it. This is what I was talking about. This, we could create isn't... something out of nothing if we just have the right parts. <laughs> miracles cannot be put in bottles. No, not a miracle. Theory. Theory and research. 
utilized with the correct components, not a miracle. He watches the, uh, as Erdon kind of stands up and then slides back the piece of paper you gave him back to you and he goes, be careful. Miracles and horrors can often be in the same thread. Life can bring forth beautiful things, but also terror. I wish I could be of more help, but unfortunately, I just simply don't have the information. Necromancy's historical influence in Delvaria is simply through word of mouth and nothing more. Do you know where more necromancy, uh, necromantic knowledge could be attained? I do know one place, but it is a place unwelcome to us. I have a feeling that uh, the ambassadors of Eastern Vale would not be stopped by such a stoppage at the door. Uh, the people of Treskaldon care not for your origin, simply your intent and your ability. With all due respect, I plan on going there myself soon. Not with magic, you're not. Then I well, guess I'm leaving my spellbook at home. Thank you very much for your time, and we appreciate your... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. You watch as he, like, puts a finger on your forehead and makes you sit back down. What am I getting in exchange? You asked for my services, and now I would like something else in return. You're from a foreign land, clearly know about foreign magic, and you seemed to trip up quite quickly when I mentioned the Great Mage War. I'm curious what you might know. It feels only fair, given that I've given you such a fine vintage and a very, very thorough lesson. Uh, if you have a question, I'm sure we can answer it, if that's what you're looking for. I'm actually quite curious about the nature of the necromantic energies. You spoke of being from Eastonvale, and last I heard through merchants traveling through Eastonvale was fraught with a rather densely packed curse. I oh am curious how about that was lifted and suddenly it has normal residences oh, recently. Oh my Oh my god, you guys, over, meta, meta over real quick. I have a bottle of the undead ash still in my fucking pocket. Oh, there you go. Oh my fucking the question god. Becomes, I, ne the, I the never question, got rid of question, that. You never got rid of it. The question becomes, do you want to give it to him, though? I oh. actually have a suggestion oh. that I'd like to put forward in character. Go ahead. Okay, let, let it ride, let it ride. I have this in my pocket. Iskan's going to turn towards Gaius. Well, we have a pretty solid account of what happened. I, we can regale you with at least our side of the story. I would very much love to hear it. My purpose in Delvari is to defend it from magical threats, and knowing more would definitely be most useful, especially if what you suggest is that there may be necromancers on the prowl. The more Gaius. I know about them, the less danger I incur into this most wonderful of royal families. Gaius, maybe you could have him be a beta reader for your book. Oh, I love reading. Gaius, can like, you, twice can you read twice. Giant? Yeah, Gaius twice can, the bottom yeah. of his lip. I, I have this. He, like, shows off the Agni Odyssey holding up. I don't know how to write in common. Let me see. And you watch as he takes it and he opens up the book and you can see his eyes dart down the pages and immediately he's kind of like leaning in. Like, you know, when you read a book and it's like the first chapter, it's just like, and Derek died in an instant. You're like, whoa, okay, we're starting off strong. He kind of <laughs> leans forward and begins to read. He goes, I could perhaps borrow this for the evening. Mm, guy is like, fucking his face scrunches in. Mm. I will give it back, I swear. If this is for the good of my allies, then very well. A man Think is of only it as like good this. as his word, Mr. Agni. Think of it like this. You'll have a good idea of how people take to it. Mm -hmm. Some bits and pieces have to be made. Guys is fumbling his words. Part of it might be <laughs> private, but oh. I suppose... Sorry, I, I didn't realize... No, it's nothing damning or anything, just names and places I'd much rather not be said out loud. 
Well, is there anything sure. else you would take in exchange then? No, it's what if it's if it's, but if it's a private matter, he kind of oh, closes no, the book and hands no, it guy, back. Guy, guys, like puts his hand up and shoves it over. It could be just me being over paranoid. All things considered, I see. Rest assured, my days of blackmail and charlatanism have disappeared in my youth. I intend in only intrigue and assistance. That I can assure you. I mean, worst case scenario, if you actually do go back to your old roots, my grandma would probably curse you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he begins to get kind of a little nervous. <laughs> Threats of violence are quite common in my circle, but that is the first time a magical threat has been uttered. It is surprisingly terrifying and yet refreshing in the same breath. Then I think you'll like the first chapter. Indeed. I will finish this vintage and take to reading. Oh, and if you have any other need of anything or wish to exchange uh, words, I'm always welcome to more civilized company. Lest another meathead come in here and tell me to fix something that cannot be fixed with magic. Well, I for one certainly uh, enjoyed my time here. As did I. I wish you can help the girl. Rest assured, she might be able to take what information I've provided and make a cure. Uh, Master what, Kai, after if you. If you are going to endanger anybody in the royal family, leave Layla out of it. She's quite nice. Uh, we don't intend to endanger anyone in the royal family. Great. Quite the opposite, actually. Well, I hope to speak more with you again. Take care. And try to keep their head on your shoulders. <laughs> we only uh, promise to do our question. best. One last yes. question, actually. Uh, boy, this is like a common theme. If you're so sick of the meatheads, why do you stick around? Uh, consider my arrangement with them to be elaborate house arrest. Ah. Oh. If you I... may recall, Sir Roussel is the reason that magic users aren't necessarily trusted around these parts. Well, you're not hated well, yeah, but anymore, why... but... Simple, quiet, contemplative views beat out just immediate animosity, if you ask me. Yeah. But couldn't you just teleport outside the city and leave? <laughs> he sips his wine, roll an insight check. <laughs> I, I feel like he that sign for I've tried. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, 15. Come on, 11 from East Gun. You know what? Fuck it. I got insight with advantage. Here I go. Go for it. Why the hell not? Eighteen. Oh my oh. god, Gaius, you meet the <laughs> you meet him. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Z has to Here message you a secret real fast. Okay. Die. Where are you on my list? Oh boy. Well, we tried, boys. We certainly did. I thought I was gonna do well. But... Hold on. Some secrets Stone, even peppered Stone frogs. Stone giant. Can't remember. Boy, boys, I don't know how to tell you this, but Stone giant. <laughs> yeah. Judicial system giants. Yeah, I do have a response regardless of the insight. Alrighty. I am excited to see what you get told. Oh, I am. Hold on. If I'm... if it's shareable. I I'm I'm not. I'm probably not going to be able to share it just yet. There you go. That's where you're able to discern Gaius as you as you watch him and he laughs nervously. Oh boy. Uh, so as he takes that sip, Kai will respond, not gleaning anything from it. Well, you did say that you were interested in exchanging information, and I may or may not be currently in the home of teleportation magic. So should that be an interest to your collection, perhaps we could talk sometime, is all I'll say. <laughs> I see. I did have a nice little peruse for your spellbook, by the way. I hope you like my penmanship on that one particular page, but... Um, yeah, I could tell instantly who wrote it. I know, right? Such a fine pen. Nothing you'd find around here. But uh, perhaps we can discuss it in future. I'm not exactly one for spell scrolls. He kind of scrunches his face as he says that. Or the unraveling of the basis of magic, as most of my powers are innate. 
However, anything about the Great Mage War is of great interest to me, and I would very much like to speak of it. But I digress. You have a great rest of your night, then. I will. I have Shall wine and a book. I think it's going to be wonderful. Yep. Sure it is. Stragall will take to the him. door first and open it for everyone. Kai will let out a big sigh as he walks through. Gaius doesn't move his head, but he looks and he looks to a direction as you're wa as we're walking out. Like his eyes dart to one direction while his back is to uh to the sorcerer. Hey, can I on the way out do a quick perception check towards where Gaius is looking? Mm-hmm. You look there. You see where he's looking. You had to make a check for it. Oh, well, I wasted a 22. <laughs> um, you see that it seems like Gaius's eyes are darting over to the left side of the room where you see that dragon statue. The face of the dragon carved into the wall. Something interesting about that statue, Gaius? We're not out of the room yet, are we? I'm uh, asking I'm as we're leaving. As you leave and the door is close behind you. Gaius giggles to himself. <laughs> well, I'm gonna okay. wait till we have the fresh air away from the sorcerer's chambers. You got Before it. he like looks over to East Cannon like and smirks. Remember how he never answered you? Remember how he, how he never answered the question? You talking to everybody? Well that was more to East Gone. Which, ah, which question? How, when we asked him, has he not tried to teleport himself out? Oh, yeah? Uh, that dragon has something to do with it. He might be putting... He, uh, he seems to be putting himself down on the whole teleportation bit. Oh, so he is leaving. Oh, no. Just that. He has means. Huh. You must like it here, then. Please, we need uh, A.S. guidance further to help these children, as well as, I believe, Master Brightbeam might be instrumental in understanding a bit of divine magics. As Kai, as much as I have grown to trust you and respect your theories and opinions on things, good intentions do not necessarily make good magic. See, that's the thing is I don't even disagree with you, but I still got to try. I know. Meanwhile, in the apothecary, Milo. Oh boy. As the rest of the party leaves you behind and abandons you forever. I'm just joking. Uh, I'll be just uh, like them. In the arms of an angel. That's fine. Uh, Aya's new best friend. <laughs> Uh, Aya actually uh, takes you out into the garden, this Ooh. large and beautiful garden of all sorts of different flowers from different creeds at the corners of the world. Uh, and as she kind of leads you in, she kind of, in, in, in sort of like a kid showing off their bionicles, she's very much like, look, look at this garden, isn't it cool? Uh, but she kind of guides you through it. And it definitely feels like you are just in like the stronghold of Delvaria, and this place definitely feels like a different world, almost. I just find it kind of odd that so much can grow here. Me too, honestly. Though the lands are dry, it is quite fertile. Introduce water and life seems to grow. Hmm. Things that are seemingly dead can be full of life, interestingly enough. You know, back home, I remember that um, a couple of the farmers would say that um, silt from rivers and such could actually bring a lot of minerals to otherwise barren places. Is there anything like that in the area? The lakes of Delvaria, I was told, uh, contain many nutrients. Um, specifically, the waters contain many minerals that are beneficial to humans and plants alike. Hmm. This what garden if... actually once belonged to the late queen. It sort of fell to disarray, but the king actually um, gave it to me, rather, and I've been tending to it ever since. Do you think it might be a supernatural thing or more of a natural? Um, I think it's natural. Definitely a lot of work. There are many servants who work in these gardens. And, and you watch as she turns the corner, you can see standing in the middle of this very large, lush section, a statue of what appears to be like a goddess. 
Mm -hmm. uh, holding in one hand a sort of like some sort of herb in one hand and in the other hand there seems to be a natural fountain of water pooling from the hand. Mm -hmm. and you watch as Aya kind of clasps her hands and begins to pray in front of the statue, which you get the sense, Bilo, this is a statue of Medicina, the celestial of medicine. I will actually pray with her because I'm a bit uh, keen on Medicina. Okay. As you pray to the statue, you gain the benefits of Medicina's blessing, which you gain advantage on medicine checks for 24 hours. Oh, dang. Yep. Aya kind of looks up from the statue and she goes, we should pick the ingredients that we're going to need and repick the ingredients that were eaten. Right, there was a lot lost. Yes. Ugh. Again, I apologize for my fear of the beetles, but it's whenever I see them, I just feel so unwell. No, it, it makes sense, all things considered. I just, I worry if there's supernatural insects coming in or if they're from the area. Uh, I, I don't no. think it matters, but... Um... Mm. Don't you get unwell when you stand in darkness, given that your, um, was it your mother or your father is a celestial? It was my father, actually. Um, I, I, I do, but the one thing that I always gotta remember, that no matter how powerful the agents of Nox may be around me, that I'm not alone. And that's something that kind of steadies me in, in times of unease. I see. <laughs> I feel just so unwell but never really been quite so strong, but I digress. I want to recreate the uh, potion that your um, friend who wrote all these notes down makes. I want to see if I can improve on it, perhaps use that as a basis as it showed some signs of success. All right. Um, well, also I'm going to need other uh, medicines as well. I'm going to have you work on the medicines for Layla and then we can go from there. All right, that sounds good. Um, just let me know what I need to get, and I'll go get it. Of course. Here, I'll show you. And you watch as she kind of guides you. Uh, and I would like you to roll me a medicine check with advantage and a knowledge mm -hmm. nature check with advantage. Boom and boom. So <laughs> 25 and 9. All right. Uh, <laughs> you learn how through very simple herbs how to make basically a... Um, I don't want to say painkiller, but it is basically like some sort of like anti-inflammatory painkiller style medication. Mm. Um, you get the sense that if you were to apply this on a person who is unconscious, it would probably stabilize them. It wouldn't like return them to health, but it would stabilize them at least in the meantime. It might be sure. good to carry with you. Absolutely. Um, so you can add that knowledge, and this is part of that can be shared with the entire party. Um, yeah, you have the ability to make um, basically stabilization medication, more or less. Is it a salve or is it something ingestible? Uh, it is ingestible. Uh, the other thing, though, is that at first you fail the nature check, so you will have to make checks to determine what foliage you're going to need to do that, basically. So. Well, I figured that was kind of part of the reason we're out here. <laughs> uh However, Aya, you, you help Aya carry things. You get the sense that when she even carries something slightly above her weight threshold, she just really cannot handle it. Oh. Um, and you get the sense as you stand out in the sun that she actually gets tired very quickly. Uh, eventually, the two of you make your way back. It's also worth pointing out Dessa is with you the whole time, but she's like a statue. She doesn't really interact, but she's just kind of there. Um, but Aya kind of helps you carry some things and you kind of gather it all in a basket and she kind of turns to you and she goes, um, I want to apologize again for Rejar's behavior towards you. It's, it's, I don't hate the man. I just, I'm very confused by him, if that makes any sense. I understand that. He's quite confusing, but he's not cruel, at least to me. And no, I don't get that. It's just... Forgive me for saying it, but he's no, a great he, he's come a great on. warrior, and I, I I'm sure a great leader, but he's a terrible teacher. <laughs> Be fair, I'm not exactly the best teacher either. Sometimes when people are good at things, it doesn't exactly translate to them being good at teaching things. I can understand that. Odette is a far better teacher than I am. You'll see very quickly, but I mean. Oh, but if anything else. It's very easy to see that he loves you very dearly. He does. I'm a little overwhelmed at times, but he means well. He's trying, clumsy as he might be, but I'm slowly getting to like him too. To be I honest think... with you, I thought he would just kill me at this point, but 
Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Why do you say that? I just, his reputation, such a mythos about him and the stories of him on the battlefield were horrifying to say the least. Well, you can't judge someone just because of what other people think of them. Hmm. That's true. But uh, getting to know him better, I know that he is... I think he cares too much in a weird way, if that makes sense. Oh no, that makes all the sense in the world. He, he watches over you like a hawk, but all things considered, I can kind of understand why. I think even with training, he's ruthless and cruel because I think he knows that the things you face are ruthless and cruel. I... I'm rehashing ground we've already walked, but considering what you're facing, I think that he is being so hard on you because he knows that what you face is going to be just as hard, if not worse. I can understand and respect that. Mm. But, you know, something I think that man needs, I think he needs hope. I think he has it. He just isn't used to it <laughs> yet. That can be even more difficult to get through. If you're given something that... You've never had all your life, and you don't know what to do with it. I think you're lost. I'm confused. I'm afraid. But he's a good guy. He tries. <laughs> he could be nicer. <laughs> she watches. She watches. She kind of kicks a rock a little bit. I think. I, I think. You know, it, it's interesting, and maybe this is the wrong metaphor, but. Like take the sun for example, it's mm. it's it's big and overpowering and and it, when the night comes that it, normally there'd be no light, oh, maybe starlight, but we're not counting that. <laughs> but you've got but you've got the moon. The moon is is it, it's smaller. It it seems less significant than the sun, but it's equally as important. And so, it's like the moon can guide the light of the sun into the darkest of places. And the moon is the thing that we need the most in the darkness. Hmm. So maybe you're like his moon. He's got all this overwhelming power like the sun. And maybe in the worst times, he use, he can use you to redirect all of that attention to more important things in, in the worst times. Rodan has spoken and said that he is mellowed out. She tries to do a fancy accent, but kind of fails. <laughs> Yeah. After my introduction to the family, but I cannot give myself such credit, such power would go to one's head. But thank you, Milo. Your words are very kind. Can I Cal tell yeah. you a story? Oh, sure. When we were traveling back to um, Delaria, I left home for the first time ever. I had never left the apothecary or the capital city or even the castle. It was my first time. I was pretty scared to be honest mm. and I thought the entire time that I had to be brave I couldn't be afraid I couldn't show fear lest the war be restoked and I remember we made camp for the night in the woods of Hearthland and I remember hearing the wolves the mm. man eaters darkened stories I'd seen people coming in with vicious wolf bites the pain of which I could imagine so deep in my mind when I heard them howling, I was terrified. I just couldn't sleep. I was shivering in fear. But then Rerjra woke up, and he asked me what was wrong. And at first I thought to lie to him, but I told him the truth. And you see her kind of like gently fidget her fingers together. Mm -hmm. He told me he would never let a wolf kill me as long as he lived. And I don't know. After that, I felt like everything would be maybe okay. That's a good way to look at it. Mm. There, there have been... I've seen terrible, terrible things. Not just in my complete short life, but very recently. And no matter what happened, I'll never let up hope. And maybe that's not the best thing to do all the time, so to look on the sunny side of life, so to speak, but there's something to that. It seems childish and, and juvenile, but without hope, like, what's the point of living? If you can't believe that things can't be better, 
and worse still when things could be better when you when you have a window open up and you can see the sunshine again you know if you don't have that hope you're never open that window hope can also be cruel myla what do you mean by that sometimes it can make us cling to things that will never be and i think that's okay hope is good i think i'd be a fool to say it wasn't but Sometimes, in life, we must be okay with accepting gentle sorrow. He kind of goes a little silent at that because he knows it's true. He doesn't want to admit it. I'm sorry. Come, I'll teach you how to make this medicine. <sighs> it's all right. You're right. But, um, I gotta, I gotta... Talk to Iskan about this. He knows about plant life more than I do. As you follow her in, she does show you. She actually makes you weave bandages. She shows you how to properly make them. Mm. Um, she kind of sits you down and she goes, you see this line here? You want to weave here? It's, it's almost like a tiny little loom. It's like a hand loom. Yeah. She kind of points out. And she goes, you must be very careful. If you pull this thread, the entire thing will come undone. Oh, in an oh instant. My. Oh, all right. Mom's guide, hand me. Mom's hands guide me. Oh, you watch, I'm so nervous. He watches Aya actually goes through and pulls out what seems to be other, like, instruments for creating medicine and seems to be preparing them for your companions. And as your companions turn the corner in their dialogue, that is where we're going to take our break. Yay! Woo! Do -do -do. Yo, we got meds! <laughs> old ibuprofen unfortunately yeah, you're gonna see you too you have to consume it which means if someone's unconscious you're going to have to do the whole chew the bark and shove it in their mouth yeah stick it in their face yeah. hey you yeah. know what hey if it's if it's to stabilize and we got no way of doing it then i'm all for it you're Kiss never too like, young to get look, addicted to your look, first penicillin bug. Look, look, look man, <laughs> oh I, I, know, I know i know zertek takes 30 minutes it all can't be fast acting not with it's that a suppository. Not Good with that news, everyone. With, with the hopes and fucking wishes that my allergies will just go the fuck away? That's amazing if it could work. I've invented a machine that lets you revive your fallen comrades. And it's a suppository. But you have to stick it in your mouth first. <laughs> Remember, Tigtone, you fine. have the reverse dagger. <laughs> I know they're sticking it in your mouth after, I guess. That's I mean, true. yeah, yeah. It's delivered via tongue. No, uh, no, uh, no, 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 absolutely no. not. Let I'm me good. eat that ass, boy. What's your bio? The halftime show, folks. We're done. <laughs> Go to the yeah, bathroom, get a drink, on. do something else, leave. Live, damn it. Live. <laughs> I'm going to call out these bits and subs so that we can't ever hear that ever again out of your mouth. Twitch your Mary, thank you for the 500 bits. Let let Aya and her unit of a man become this campaign's Doros and Willow. They got a long way to go. Uh, Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 95 bits. I'm excited for next Wednesday because it's my two-year VTuber anniversary and the start of Gobtober. That's true. If you missed it, Gobtober's back. Gob well, congratulations on the anniversary. is going to be on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Morth Randor, thank you for the 100 bits. Great scene, Gaijin. I agree. I also agree. agree. Uh, Volk with 100 bits. Time for a Nox joke. Nox, Nox. Who's there? Nox, Maybe. Nox. Who? It's a hard Nox life. For us. Minus it's hard 10. Nox it's life. Yeah, for get out. Us. Just get no, out. Plus, plus five for me. Do it again. Instead of treated, no, we the perk get get drowned. Instead of beat it, up, we get bot muted. The the says we have the two hundred minutes. on MTV. <laughs> oh my god! Episode title: Glass Half Empty. That's actually not bad. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I see it half full, personally. Mm. Uh, Burnout on with hundred minutes. Hey Bosco, used... Death Pool is getting better. We're gonna have to talk soon. Oh boy. Oh no. Uh, oh, shit. Ellie, thank you so much for the hundred bits. You know, if the Oh, wait a second. Why are you like that? There we go. <laughs> if the guys wanted to get back at Aya's hubby, just make him take etiquette lessons with Otha. 
Oh goodness. Someone oh, may die. No, of see, yeah, you're slouching. <laughs> Just like fucking like you, you slap him with a fucking thin wire. No, with a hour. I like to imagine no. it's just like you're slouching. What does that mean? <laughs> you're being you. Your back Stop isn't straight. I'll you. break your back. No. Oh. <laughs> Damn. First of all, we got a hype train, Monty. If you want to get out that oh my God. locomotive. I like that. <laughs> hey, there it is. Hey, <laughs> Mika Pachi with the 95 bits. Knox, Knox, who's dire? Get out. <laughs> I told you to get out. Twisty the Kitty with 100 bits. So, Monty, the unboxing. Is it Conquest Minis? Like a one person in the chat said AO. What? Wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> to Rare Gerard blowing Otho's back out. Oh, oh yeah. Ayo! 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 I like to imagine. Ayo! I'd like to imagine that if Otho does reform him, reform him his new reformed, like, refined name would be something like Roger. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Roger. May I introduce you, Roger. Ferrer Roger. Ferrer Roger. <laughs> he looks like <laughs> Oh, now you've done it. I wow. got her. Kill her. Oh. Can't believe you've killed her. <laughs> got her. I inhaled a fucking blueberry. Oh my god. Oh, oh. There it is. Amazing. I'm glad it was Those small. Those kind of it's supposed to be healthy for you. Monty, no shields. It definitely almost gave me no oxygen <laughs> for a moment. I appreciate you, Zan. I don't. Oh my god. Oh, he just looks fair. like Blackfoot that fucker from Cats Can't Dance. Black, Blackfoot Ferret with the 500 bits. Without hope, you can't see the sun. It's always good to try. Bleh. Just don't fly too close to it. Morth Randor, thank you for the 100 bits. Choo choo! And Callum Draws, thank you for the 5 bits. Otho training Ragnus like spy training Scout. <laughs> Seduce me! <laughs> Bubba you Bob, thank you for the one. With a bucket of chicken? <laughs> Bubba Bob, thank you for the 500 bit Zito. When Gaius mentioned his grandma placing a curse on the sorcerer, I thought of Grammy. She is a fae, after all. I love the I mean, fact that you did that, uh, Zito, because like that man has been like everyone's threatened to kill him and like kick his ass or like break his arms, but you're the first one to be like, I'll. There, there might be a curse involved. He's like, oh, that's real shit. He's like, that's actually yeah. a thing I can fucking do. Oh, no, I'm scared you. of you. <laughs> uh, GTG Maximo, thank you for the 10 at tier one subs gifted to the community. Uh, Killer Chansey, thank you for the 10 bits. I like to imagine Otho sips wine like a cat. Little, so little, tall, little. Tall, it's, yeah. better, it's better than Strigal in his beak. <laughs> I was gonna say, trying to get that down. I just down. want you to try and drink from a glass and we just hear a tink. I want to imagine you open up your beak, pour a little bit in the bottom part, close, and then tilt back. <laughs> <laughs> Got a soup we ladle go hard. to drink all your we, stuff. Yeah, soup, oh, we go hard in the paint here. Uh, also, Zen, also, thank you so much. Hmm? Oh, sorry. No, no, I was gonna say, okay. Gaijin, are you here? Uh, oh. yeah. I, 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 that, was I, really, that was really pleasant. I liked that. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I was trying so hard we not actually, to trip on my tongue. We had a donation that said good scenes, so well done, you two. Oh, Zan, thank dude. you for the 100 bits. Otho, for God's sake, straighten up. You're looking like a shrimp like that, Ragnus. The fuck's a shrimp? Yeah, he wouldn't know. They don't have shrimp here. They have no, they don't do seafood. Yes, we do. We yeah. see food all the time. Uh, I'm already level four on a hype train. This is crazy. Thank y'all for so many donations. Oh, you, you guys are really yeah. sweet. Yeah, thank you. It's all coming together. Also, someone said something well, about Cog Quest minis. I missed what that was. Oh yeah, somebody asked if the surprise was kind of Twisty the Kitty. The asked unboxing. if that was the surprise, the surprise? unboxing. Oh no. The unboxing. No. Trust me, I have quite the backlog of Conquest minis. It's DD minis. I ordered in some more sand and stone because I uh, want more of the minis in my collection. Volk, Volk with 100 bits with no hope. You still have spite. No, not smite. Spite. Spite is a great reason to keep going. Zan, thank you for the 100 bits. Bosco, no shields. I just wanted to get the high train up there. Level five. Yeah, that's Thanks, I appreciate it. You had to go with that one, though. So, oh, actually, I had a story since I heard Monty get up and leave. Zako just reminded me. 
So I was in a session today, and we were working on a, a bunch of different characters. And one of the characters they threw at me, they're like, "So this uh, this character is a little bit younger. Uh, he's kind of a magic user who's not all that confident. He's kind of figuring himself out. But as he levels up, he gets a little bit stronger." And I'm like, "Oh, don't worry, guys. I have a D and D character that I'm playing right now, just for you. Let's go ahead and roll it." And they were like, "Oh yeah, that voice is great." So Kai is in a video game now, and here's the best part: as we went through the script, he summons. Necromatic energy. Oh no! But his more powerful uh, spells, and I went. It's happening. Dang. No, that you know what that means now. We have to kill you in game. Yeah, you do. You absolutely do. It means we gotta sue. We are, are we, suing are you all... for a creative license. It's yeah. So good. Are we yeah. all back? I believe so. We're all back. I'm not here. Uh, I would say also if you guys want information uh, before we get back into it, Erden can give you the magical item like information for the manual if you'd like it oh yeah that'd be great yes all right oh, i thought he said he couldn't well he has information on them like very detailed information he just doesn't have the physical thing because oh, if you use it, it disappears. i totally misunderstood i yeah. thought he said he didn't have any information on it no he has tons of information which is why he cross-referenced the note that you had essentially in an instant because he recognized it but he says whoever whoever had this manual of basically manual of flesh golems specifically uh altered it so it doesn't disappear after being used which makes it incredibly dangerous to us i posted it in chat there for you oh perfect thank I will you copy it into my notes. thank you thank you very much manual of boy so this is we can use this as what he has okay this is the information that it gives you got it okay. however th it's an altered version of this manual meaning that it's not meant mm. to be destroyed afterwards got so it's, it. well, for you. It, it's reusable which is the concerning part hmm. so we have a page of this manual you have a um replicated page but even that seems to have ties to the original somehow okay yeah the the words itself take on the power well, exactly, point of, yeah. Point of reference, uh, if we look at it, we don't take the damage, right? No, you don't. Okay. If you try and <laughs> okay. use it, like, if you tried to read it, like, as the manual, like, in the manual, you would take damage, yeah. It does what if we copy damage. it? I was going to say, what, what yeah, defines can somebody it? that can use it? Can we ring this and just, like, make a blind <laughs> copy of it, and then we don't take the damage from the copy? All right, we're getting back into it. You also only have like a page, so like that's not enough to really. So we can't. Yeah, that makes sense. Can yeah. I roll a perception to envision the rest of the book? Fuck you! We're getting back into the game. <laughs> Jeez. How much? How much electrum would it cost to buy the rest of the book? Yeah, Monty I never will... lets us have any fun. You know what? I've decided. You read the page. You all take psychic damage. <laughs> hey, I wasn't there. Uh oh, and we're can all gonna die because that's a lot of damage. A real big one. All right, all right. <clears throat> Everyone here. Connor, you're here. Bosco's here. Gaijin, you're here. Mm -hmm. Mark, you're here. Yeah. Zan, you're here. Present. Zito, you're here. No. Okay. Present. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, as you all return back, uh, Aya currently seems to be like kind of hovering above Milo, giving him instructions. Uh, and you notice that there, the the apothecary itself has taken on a very lovely smell of like fresh, like basically fresh herbs and flowers, almost like a florist shop. Eleven herbs and spices. Yeah, that's the secret to saving the children. Eleven I herbs and spices. <laughs> it's eleven herbs and spices to cure all of your curses. We can solve it if only <laughs> we can find the kernel. Finally, <laughs> the sweet KFC. Oh my God. We're going to definitely get the Italian herb and cheese on not this Not sponsored. One. Wait not a sponsored. second. Ozomir Harland. He looks like Colonel oh Sanders. Oh, my God. It's all coming together. Oh <laughs> it all comes together. I knew he looked familiar. <laughs> Damn it. All righty. But as Aya sees your turn, she goes, oh, you're back. How was Erdan? Uh, really good. Question. You're delivering a baby soon, right? Wait, I should start at the beginning of this. Kite. Slow down. Um, Slow down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we got some really good information. So, essentially, uh, uh, bad energy, good energy, necromancy, kind of overwhelming bad energy. We really need some good energy. So, we really need, like, either a baby born or an umbilical cord from a baby. Master Kaisar? Yeah? You know that there are steps to casting a spell. There are steps to a conversation. 
Take a moment. Recollect yourselves. Start over. Aya, so like, Spongebob doing... blinks twice, like... By the sun, what did I miss? He was... He knew a lot of stuff. He yeah, is quite wise. Yeah, but we need to be able to break it down and explain it, not just word vomit it at them. Yeah, okay, okay, so, uh, from the start, right. Okay, so I can do this. Um... Right, so he basically explained that the spell that was used, uh, this this scroll that we have, uh, is a copied down version of a very very old, uh, like manual to create a golem, and that is the creature that we saw with the kids, and their creation is what caused the effect on the kids. So he basically explained it in that the necromatic energy used to activate this scroll, uh, which should have been consumed in the process, but wasn't. So that's concerning. Um, Basically, there was so much of it that it overcame the, the life energy, and now that it's all out of whack, it's affecting the children because it's drawing their energy to basically supplement the, the gap. Uh, he, it's like air in a cup versus liquid. When you drink the liquid, there's only air, so we're trying to put liquid back. Liquid being a positive spell, some kind of like clerical spell or something positive, and you know, birth is a positive thing, which is where that idea came from, but we don't have to get into that. But we basically need something that can act as a magical conduit that would represent life instead of death. Does it have to be magical? It could just be an object, couldn't it? Because spells, yeah, that was... you watch as she rummages through the papers again, it was listed here that all these spells that would usually afflict, affect normal ailments didn't work. If it is a unique ailment, like you said, a disease born from magic, it should be able to be cured like a disease, but it might require a more strong ingredient. But even then, I still don't know how exactly it's affecting the children, which we'll have to figure out right now. But that's really good information. Thank you so much. Um, hi, Sar. I like that. Hi, Sar. It sounds so I just, yeah. cool. All right, so I got a stupid idea. If I mean, we we're need... full of those today, so go for if, it. If, if we need to invigorate the area full of life versus all the non-life, I, I guess. Sorry, I wasn't there. You're going to have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. What if we brought some animals and plants in? Something simple, so you know? I, that was my thinking think, as well. Yeah, the, the thought is to get as much of it in the area as possible so that there's a balance of the energies. Well, um... So yeah, that could work. Sorry, that is why most medicines are actually made of plants, is because plants are life. Um, I learned that when I studied, but, hmm, again, you've done plenty. I will definitely take this information into account. Anything magical, I might have to lean on you for assistance, but now we know a bit more about what we're facing. Now is time for the process of elimination. Uh, first, we have to recreate the medicine that your friend make, and I want to work with that from a, as a basis, as clearly it has brought some monochrome of success. However, it's the sense of permanency that bothers me astutely. Mr. Arthur, are you scratching the furniture? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Please let them be canon. <laughs> it's canon. <laughs> He's just, like, kneading, sharpening his claws on the furniture. <laughs> Pick my nails when I'm thinking. Would you like a nail clipper? I'll be fine. Okay. Um, that being said, are you once... okay? Huh? Me? Oh no, I was just worried. He he normally does that when he's thinking deep thought. Well, I'm thinking quite a bit. This is quite the conundrum, but I digress. Um, I'm. Who would like to help me with making a base, and and who would like to help me with Layla's medicine? Um, Milo, if you don't mind continuing to make bandages, that would be most useful. Oh sure. Uh. Eastgun, you're practice. pretty good with plants, right? Uh, I oh. guess on like a really basic level. Oh, that would be great. I could teach you about different plants. I don't know all of them, but perhaps the more medicinal ones would be useful to you. You know, um, sometimes plants can tell you the direction of things. Well, you mean like how they grow towards the sun? Yes, exactly. I, I've heard stories of Medicina guiding um, lost herbalists in the woods by certain plants pointing in certain directions. You mean they'll subconsciously seek that positive energy? Huh? They'll subconsciously seek the positive energy. I don't know about that, but it certainly makes for a good story. Hmm. And there is some truth to it that some plants grow only on the certain sides of trees. 
Um, I digress. Um, Gaius. Yeah. You seem like you'd be very good with the Morton Pestle. Do you mind working for me and making some of this medicine? If I'm shown what I'm to do, then absolutely. Of course. Here, I'll show you. And she kind of walks over and very much like ghost pottery style shows you how to use the Morton Pestle. <laughs> uh, She's Patrick Swayze now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, as I'm taught, I'm, I basically have, God, now I just imagine it's the fucking, the palm power on a fucking Mario Party stage. Just with the Morton Pester, just going a million miles an hour. Careful, you'll break your N64 controller. It, yeah. Funny enough, I've, I've never broken it, and I've done palm power. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what you learn from Aya, as she kind of shows you, is that dry ingredients you want to crush at the bottom, and then you want to avoid just grinding things along the edge. You want to try and keep everything down and just kind of bash it at the bottom and keep it uniform. Right. Uh, Kai, you mentioned you have magical knowledge. Uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that I do. I'd like you to skim through these notes. You know more about magic than I do. I just want to see if there's something in here that perhaps um, Master Milo could assist with. Yeah, I'll take a look. Otho, uh, if you wouldn't mind plucking the leaves off of this branch. Of course. And Iskan, I'm going to need you to boil some things for me. Are you able to do that? Sure. You have goggles, so hey. it would probably help. I, I, I don't follow. Sometimes it can irritate the eyes a little bit. Oh. Hmm. Uh, well, hey, Strigal, could, way. Strigal, could you help me with these notes? Uh, he seems kind of thinking about something else as he acknowledges. Uh, I'm sorry, what do you need help with? Uh, these notes, I, I figure we can get through them quicker if we both look at them. Uh, sure. Yes, yeah, of course. You You okay? I just all in my mind. Let's keep busy for now. Yeah, sure. I would like everybody for me to make medicine checks, please. Oh no! Oh, oh wait, but but I, can I do an arcana instead because I'm magical? You know. Uh, I'll say if you guys have a better idea for a role, if you want to, like, I'd say like you know, for example, Gaius could easily use athletics because he is doing yes, this kind please, of. Yes, please, for God's yeah. sake! <laughs> I was gonna say because Kai, Kai and Stragall are gonna be very arcana based right now, so that would help greatly. Twenty four. Use... If we're deciphering religious texts or even vaguely divine, I don't mind doing a religion check as well. I've got some decent in that. Okay, I can yeah, also do would... religion if you prefer that. Religion or arcana, I... your choice. Arcana. Can I use sleight of hand <laughs> to pull these yes. leaves off of the? You absolutely yeah! can Excellent. So I, I got a 19 on my medicine check. I also got a 19 on my arcana. Roll 20, more like roll roll below a 10, right? <laughs> you nailed it. Roll 10 it. for you. 15 athletics. Nice, 15 all right. sleight of hand. Correct. It's honestly a very peaceful time, just like, just the process of the medicine making. Aya is surprisingly fast, as every time you finish a component, she collects it and seems to process it with alchemist supplies, eventually culminating in reproducing what Agrun had made for the children over time. Uh, Milo, the trickiest part for you is the bandage making. You get the sense mm. that if you just pull a single thread, the whole thing unravels very well, it, quickly. It's, it's, it's a 24, not a 10. It is a, it is a 24, but you know, okay. you realize that very quickly. I want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> However, you manage to keep the motion going and eventually are able to make a, probably about a, you know, foot long length of bandage, which you could easily use for patching up a wound. Neat. Um, however, as all of you are kind of lost in the process, you hear footsteps approaching, heavy footfalls approaching. As turning uh, the corner. Was... Mm. Oh boy. Go ahead. I was going to say on a okay. scale of one to 20. <laughs> on a scale uh, of one to Razor. <laughs> yeah. Razor art level. Yeah. Okay. Great. Ah, great. But one, 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 why weren't one, you in elf practice? <laughs> <laughs> you just, I imagine once we all realize that, you just hear an audible pucker in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everybody's like, oh god, don't come in here. Uh, however, the light that has been coming in through the door immediately turns dark, like a shadow. Right. Uh, as walking in, you see Rarejar, and the moment he's got, like, a very sweet smile on his face, and immediately it curls into a scowl as he sees all of you working inside of the apothecary. You can hear uh, uh, Strigal, knowing that Rarejar can't do anything in this particular place, he's gonna give a very friendly wave. 
Hi is also going to wave at him with a very ingenuine smile. <laughs> Big summer blowout. <laughs> I'm just watch, too focused. <laughs> you watch as he goes, why are they here? And Dessa steps forward and she kind of like, you know, acknowledges all of you and turns to him and goes, they're here to help. And then Rarishur kind of turns towards Aya and goes, why did you not ask me for help? And you watch as Aya turns up and goes, oh, so great of you to volunteer. And she hands him a Morton <gasps> pestle. Yes! And you watch as he's like, uh, uh, uh. No, Rarishur, it's fine. You just got to mash it up. You're, it'll be easy. Uh, we'll if you'd prefer, you can help us decipher the script. Welcome yeah, it's to true. Mary Life's doing, like, magic stuff. <laughs> you can also help me pluck these leaves, but... Um... Look for this Actually, Rajar, <laughs> Rajar, could you take a look at this script for me real quick? Just let me know your thoughts. This guy's going to hold up one of the pieces of paper to him. He walks up and he looks at it. Paper. Symptom. I don't get it. No, oh, it's fine. It's confusing me, too. It's all good. I, but the mortar and pestle, you got it. <laughs> he yeah, kind yeah. of scowls at you and then Aya just, like, smiles at him and nods. But he looks over and sees you, Gaius, currently working the Morton Pestle. Hi. Hi. <laughs> he sits down on the bed next to you, and you're, like, slightly launched into the air for a brief moment, as he just begins to, like, roughly just bang over and over at the bottom of the Morton Pestle. He just pestle. uses his finger Gaius, to... I'm, you know what? No, I'm, I'm gonna be fucking brave. Gaius grabs him by the wrist to stop him and shakes his head no. What? I am... Doing as you are doing. Yes, but you're doing it a little too rough. See, watch this. And he, like, shows him how he's doing it. He tries to match you, and you can see every vein in his head just, like, <laughs> And he's trying so hard to be, like, low-tier, like, low tier, like <laughs> he, can, he can break this Hold thing in his back. hand, and he's trying not no, to shatter it with every kill. I imagine Kai and Stragal just seeing this are fucking trying to not laugh and fucking exactly. mentally Fortnite dancing in our heads. Duh. They're, they're, it's just you guys orange justicing. <laughs> uh, he's going to roll a medicine check. Let's go. Good luck. I want to give him... I actually want him to roll high on this. Can I... I <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Um, I wanted to uh, guidance him, actually, if possible. You currently have your hands full, unfortunately, and you get the sense okay. that if you were to let go, unfortunately, the bandages would probably unravel. It seems like a very delicate process. <laughs> he okay. guides, he just throws it at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gaius, are you going to help him? Yeah, I was going to give him uh, a support, whatever it is. The Advantage. Advantage, yeah. So this is what happens. Rarigar clearly came in here for a purpose, sees all of you, immediately has a Morton pestle put into his hand. You show him a piece of paper. He doesn't get it. He grumpily sits down. He starts just smashing the bottom of the Morton pestle. You stop him, Gaius. And then the rest of you all are doing your own thing. And you hear Gaius, like, crunch. And then very quickly afterwards, crunch, as if someone's trying to, like, catch up with him every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Guys is just gonna be supportive of him. He's just like, yeah, like that. Should I twist my wrist when I do this section, or is it better to just simply let my raw strength crush this weak leaf under my weight? That last part you should do when you're starting the rotation all over again. I see. It's like a quarter circle. What? God damn it! What? I got it in! I got it in! I got it in! I got it in! Let's go! Let's go! Zito, I don't know if you drink, but I owe you a beer. <laughs> that was perfect. I'm so proud. I don't get it. <laughs> it's quarter a fighting circle, game thing. Don't worry about it. Oh, quarter circle forward. forward. Fireball oh, motion. Hadouken. I... So upset. As, I'm so uh, happy. You guys continue working, eventually handing off uh, the stuff. Gaius, you've managed to finish your pace, getting it to a very, very good consistency. Uh, and do you get up and hand it to Aya? Yep. All right. As you get up to give it to her, Rajar like grabs you by the face and like shoves you backwards and is like, "Me first And like jumps forward and he <laughs> hands off his to Aya and he's like, "Oh no, you need to do more." And he's like, "But it's perfect. I have crushed it exactly as as I was instructed." She's like, "No, no, no, more." And she like pushes him back to the bed and he sits down. And he just begrudgingly is like, you, "Shit, you did it. You did it right. You just got to do more of it." 
I see. I understand. And Aya walks over to you guys and checks yours. Oh, wow, guys, you're really good at this. That's perfect. May have a little bit of knowledge from helping my grandmother and my sister with such things. Oh, with the information I gave Master Milo, I'm sure you could also make some good medicines as well. Cool. And she kind of takes it over. I this will be, be used. Battles longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you at least come out of battles. Well, not so much you'll last in battles longer, but the time between battles will be shorter. Rare Shore just kind of mm, nods at that and goes back to grinding. Perfect. Uh, have you finished plucking those leaves, Master Ofo? I'm working on it. Oh, wow, you've plucked quite a few already. You're so meticulous. Very talented. And she kind of smiles at you, a very earnest smile. This time you see oh. a real smile from her face, not a fake Yay. one. Yeah. I just don't want to damage the leaves is all. I appreciate that. The juices inside of them act as a sort of uh, numbing agent. They help with pain, specifically when you apply them topically to wounds. However, we're going to be using this for Layla, just for her own sake. You can actually mix numbing. it with certain oils that assist with penetrating into the skin and helps with a sort of numbing sensation. You don't say. As he <laughs> looks, <laughs> as he looks down mm. at the leaves with a bit of a... Uh... No malicious I twinkle can't in his eye. Feel my fingers. <laughs> I can't feel my face when I'm oh, with you. Oh, though they're, I love they're it. they won't hurt you right now. They have to be refined first uh, through my uh, alchemist tools. So I you're see. safe. Just maybe don't lick your fingers when you're done. I will attempt not to. She kind of nods. Uh, she walks over to you, Eskan, and Eskan, you are, like, full-on, like, witch's cauldron right now. Hell yeah. Up some stuff. Stirring yeah. a big old spoon. Hell yeah, dude. Treble! Uh, treble! <laughs> treble! Aya actually walks over with the leaves and, and drops them in, and she goes, Are your arms getting tired, Master Eskan? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is pretty similar to rolling up a map over and over again. Oh, I suppose it is. These kids are uh, fucking shredded. <laughs> he's, like, you know, he's, got the, he's got the map gains. <laughs> map but he's only got very specific <laughs> muscles that are highlighted yeah. and toned. And it's the like rest that, of him is just the muscle. Thin. The muscle under your thumb on the left side of your, or the inner side of your wrist is just fucking huge. And, and now wrist has a six pack. <laughs> now, if we can only get, now if we can only get him to work His thumb on has core. a six pack. No, no core for this lizard. He's all, all wrist strength. Yeah. Hey, uh, Aya kind of smiles to you and she goes, I don't know if it would be rude to ask. It's more of a personal curiosity. Uh, go ahead. We did not have many lizard folk or dragonborn within Hearthland. Um, I was wondering, she kind of leans behind and looks at your, your back end a little bit. My butt? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. My, my. I'm going to be killed. Rarejar is right there. He's <laughs> right there. You see him, like, as he's, like, grinding the Morton Pestle, he stops. It's like the jazz music stops, so it's like the Morton Pestle stops. What if he's also there, impressed? He slowly closes the piano and walks out. <laughs> no, no Mark, Mark, this also... Mark, you're misreading this. Me, me and my husband saw you from across the bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you're you're like, looking for like, a third. What are you looking for? And she leads back and she goes, do you ever use your tail for stirring or odds and ends? I'm so glad you finished it. <laughs> Uh, not really. Oh. It's it's not quite that prehensile. Um, I do know that there are some people who can, but for me, it's more of a. It helps me balance. Oh, I see. I was wondering, and please, again, I, I hope not to insult, but you have such very thin legs. I was wondering how you're able to stay upright with them, but the tail acting almost as if it's a another. Way to keep you upright. That's fascinating. Really, yeah, I should expand actually, my knowledge in in physiology and in others. It makes it really easy to do things like this. And he is gonna lean forward and pick up uh like a, a piece of the herbs that had fallen onto the floor, and like he'll never bend his legs. He just uses the tail to balance so that he can stay straight. Oh, how fascinating! And she smiles brightly again. Gaius, as you're kind of sitting on the bed next to Rare Gerard, you do notice that Rare Gerard's motions are actually slowing as he's just kind of watching what's transpiring. 
be be careful, Eastcon. I'm actively teaching him combo technique right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I, I'm, yeah. I'm giving him zoning tips. You might want to back. I'm, up. I'm telling you right now, if if Razor Red Roman cancels us in the next fight, I'm taking you out, Zito. Catch this fucking overhead. He's gonna take you from 75 <laughs> to 55 in one swing. Oh Christ! Good thing uh, I will make up level three. <laughs> uh, Kai and Stragal, as you guys have been between the two of you working through this paperwork, uh, you're able to determine a few things. Stuff you've already kind of known, but it just reassures it. First of all, a lot of spells were used on the kids, specifically eliminating that. It, you get the sense that that between the information provided from Erdan as well as Ea's own insight, magical effects will have no hand in solving this problem as it seems to have not succeeded. There were several spells listed that were used that just did not come to fruition, uh, as well as the application of holy water. You weren't aware of that, but there was actually a, an application of divine holy water applied as well, which seemed to have not done anything either. The interesting thing is that the spells succeeded for a little while and then immediately failed shortly after. Uh, which means that whatever this is, is bypassing the spells that there are cast. And as you kind of read, you get the sense that specifically, how do I describe it? This is so tricky to describe. Oh, I'm trying to think of how I'm going to say this. This is so difficult. I'm a professional dungeon master, by the way, as I sit here just trying to formulate words. Yeah, I've been there. That's thing that we all have experience with. Man, you get this. Hey, Monty, describe the impossibly abstract, please. Oh, no, yeah, exactly. of course. Um, you get the sense that given that this was, that Ogryn was created through basically a very cursed magical item, um, and you know that you were not provided that magical item, you get the sense just from reading the notes and how detailed they are, you get the sense that Ogryn destroyed the book. Because oh. if you recall, he mentioned he's going to give you his notes, but not the information on how to, to do it again. That's basically what Got he it. gave you. So you reading it and like seeing the way he's written it out and like kind of skimming through, you get the sense that the book is gone. Agrun probably destroyed it somehow. Okay, I, I don't understand. If, if the book was used and transferred in necromantic energy not to be destroyed, then surely the book would have the answer. Unless the problem is, the problem is it doesn't exist anymore. Do you think the book is gone? Yeah, because he would have had to have destroyed it, which is why there's only this remnants of the notes left. You also notice reading through, and also just from talking to Agrun, he knows that his death will not solve it because it was his creation, not his death that will solve it. It's not the same. And from what we deduce from uh, that charlatan of a sorcerer, it would seem that we can't just take the life that was given to this Algrun and put it back into the essence of the children. No, like you I... said, we can't take the wine from someone and put it back, so that means that he might be safe, which is a good thing, but it leaves us with that void that we still have to fill. Hey, guys, Sorry, go ahead. let me throw something out there. Of course. Um, hey, uh, have you been able to discern if there are specific plants that create this medicine that uh, these kids have been taken? Um, looking at this, these are all very normal herbs, um, similar to curing most common diseases. Could I do some kind of intelligence check to determine whether or not that same vegetation was even remotely close to the vegetation that was in that town? Uh, go ahead, yeah. You can roll... Just raw int or... Medicine with advantage, because you have that boon right Yay, now. Yay! Let's go! 25. Nice. Milo, you think about it for a while, and you're like, yeah, they had mundane stuff. They had stuff that would have cured them. And then you kind of think about it for a while, and Aya also seems to be ruminating. And then you have kind of a weird epiphany, Milo. Mm -hmm. As you're kind of sitting there, and you kind of drop the, the things, and you think about it. Okay. They take the medicine. The medicine only temporarily cures them, and then more has to be applied. It's not a permanent solution. Why isn't mm -hmm. it consistent? Consistently, like the spells, they mm -hmm. work for a bit, and then they don't work for a bit. And then you kind of have an epiphany. It's not 
a disease. There is no disease. Right. You kind of skim through the notebooks and you you kind of like move through some of the papers and A.S. sees you rush and kind of notices your hurriedness and you look through all the, the listed afflictions, like all the, the conditions that they have. Things that are common, easily solved by medications, which they easily have access to. And then you kind of think again, you know, the glass, half empty, half full. There's a void there. And then you have a bit of a visual idea where the wine glass has a hole in it and it just keeps pouring out over mm -hmm. and over. And each time it's filled, it just keeps pouring. There's no vacuum. There's no void. The vessel isn't holding. It's not the disease. It's the vessel. So th 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 there's got to be something else. It's it's these aren't regular illnesses. Regular illnesses would have been would have been healed and and cured. So something's not holding together. What do you mean? Aya kind of looks at you very seriously. As you can see, you've kind of had a moment. It's like it's like that analogy that you guys were talking about. It's it's like something has to get filled up. Well, what if what if there's a, a hole or a breach in the container? It constantly comes out, so life is constantly getting poured out, and it's all being replaced with anything. So That's each why time it's, it's filled, it empties itself. Exactly. There, there, there's got to be some kind of theoretical pocket or, or hole or something like that. That's that's preventing the life essence from from coming back. So or, we or rather need to staying. seal the vessel. Right. It's just figuring out what the vessel is, what the hole is, and how to plug it. Which is why the spell worked initially, but then it faded because exactly. it was exactly zapped. So, did we ever get confirmation that that necromancer was actually dead? Which one? The one that the created Ogrun. Created Ogrun. Ogrun I mean, said we, he killed him, didn't he? He ki he killed him, but we don't know if he's actually still dead. Assuming he's a lich of some kind. We but know even if he was. Experience. Even if he was alive or dead, the affliction was caused by the catalyst of this man's creation. You said so yourself. Nothing currently ongoing is causing this. It's just a latent side effect that occurred upon the catalyst. But it's not the fact that their strength was sapped. It's the fact that it's, it's caused a, a sort of breach of their defenses of some kind. The very essence that, that means... cannot... Their very essence is constantly open and exposed, allowing whatever <gasps> life would flow through them to fade out if given Aya immediately like gasps and like begins to like you know when someone like smacks you because they realize something and they're just like <laughs> slapping you on the side I've, I've heard of this before I, i've heard of this before sometimes there are children that are born that have the similar affliction they need some sort of remedy it's not even a medicine it, it's like a, a salve or a solvent it's very powerful hard to create but it replaces that sort of strength that they lacked a cure isn't what we need. Strength is what we need. Oh, Milo, you're a genius. And she kind of reaches and like hugs you and like, do you, are you okay with being picked up? Oh, sure. She picks you up and kind of swings you and then loses her balance a little bit and almost falls over, but then like kind of runs into you, Sir and places you down. She goes, I know exactly how to do this. Odette once had to do this when she was younger. She left her notes, but I remember it. She taught me about this. I can't believe I didn't think about that at first. Oh, Rejar, we're gonna have to give Erdan another bottle of wine. And you watch as Rejar is just like super confused, and he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah. Teamwork." And she kind of looks towards all of you, and she goes, "Okay, so we know what type of magic that happened, and we know that's what caused the hole. We need to patch it up. So we need to have not a stem of life, but a stem of death. Uh, Kaisar." Uh, sorry, uh, yeah? You, can you cast necromancy? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, that's, weirdly enough to say, fantastic. That's a baseline. We <laughs> need that's... to use it to transfer, and you see you're just, like, pacing back and forth. If we use metal of brand, and then we mix it with Medicina's favor, we could add it, but we're still going to need something larger than that. If we're going to try and patch the hole, we have to have a necromancy spell cast on it. That's how it's going to bind to the specific... Th you see, you're just pacing back and forth, just talking How strong to does the spell have to be to do a 
to be the binding agent, how how strong? Like on a scale I think of it I don't just, know, one to nine. I think it, it just needs a connection to the void. It just needs a connection to the necromantic energy that caused the hole in the first place. It's like a bird trying to return to its flock. Does that make sense? I, I hope that analogy makes sense. No, if you cast sense. that on the medicine, it will basically have ties to that will be kind of intrusive, almost like a reverse infection. An infection, but instead of hurting, it, it heals. It's a complicated process. I'm, oh gosh, okay. This is quite like the process. Like a vaccine. Like a vaccine, yes. I've heard the terminology used by scholars in Tristella Court, but we adopt it as a sort of remedy. But yes, a, a vaccine would be probably most apt to describe this. Uh, both magical and physiological vaccine. I need to scour my list of items. There's got to be something in Delvaria I can use to be the basis of this. It has to be something very strong. It has to be something we can replicate several times because we have multiple afflicted individuals. Oh, gosh, I'm going to be at this all night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, so much. I, I well, I suppose you should be thanking me. I'm the one helping you. But no, this is great. This is fantastic. This is a revelation. This is going to be very hard and difficult. What's without... Rajnarar doing? You see him just kind of watching her <laughs> blankly? Roll an insight check. Yeah! Are we all had our parts to play in this. Your grace. Me too. What? You literally beat him by one. He Let's go! He, you get the sense as he's watching her, he seems happy for her. And yeah. she seems to be smiling and thinking, and you get the sense that he's, like, watching her. And it's kind of like watching someone fighting to him as you get the sense that she's like like purposeful and like moving and acting and he's just like he's not trying to emote it but you get the sense that he he's got like a bit of a smile on his face and he looks it's like the, yeah. it's the lumberjack nod yeah basically mm -hmm. <laughs> i know exactly what you mean she kind of looks towards you all and goes I i'm sorry but i'm gonna need some privacy to work on this double thumbs up no problem here um kai uh, perhaps you can speak to Erdan, get a scroll. If you could put down that scroll, that spell onto a scroll for me, I'd much appreciate that. Yeah, I can do that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Dessa, do you mind uh, just keeping the door and don't let anyone visit me, unless it's Layla. If Layla visits, she has priority. Uh, sorry, I do still need to prioritize Layla because at any moment now she could have a baby. But. Um, I digress. Oh, oh, I haven't had something this difficult in so long. I, I hate to be excited about it. It feels so disrespectful, but at the same oh, time... It's nice to see someone else excited about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, We're going to them, though, right? I promise you. Your Grace, if you have any need of us, you do not hesitate to ask. Um, could you... I, I know you've carried it for so long, but and she hands you the griffin egg. <laughs> I don't feel like it'd be safe for me to move around so much with it, lest I will come to it. guard it with my life. Thank you. I appreciate that a ton. Okay, so first I need the metal, and then I'm going to need... You see, you just completely get absorbed. Stragal's going to kind of... going to just take himself out of the room. Stragal's going to kind of scooch over towards uh, towards Milo. Master Brightbeam, thank you. I believe we were about to get into a shouting match, myself and Kai, losing our wits at the end. Well, Your insight I mean, is most appreciated. I mean, it, 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 it made sense. It was like, oh, I was thinking, well... If it's if it's not a thing we could cure, maybe it's the fact that we need more of the vegetation that could counteract these these things to kind of fill the gap, so to speak. But it's got to be something bigger than that. There, there had to have been a, a greater hole, and and there had to be something bigger than just trying to plant more vegetation in the area to try and and recoup. It, I don't know. It was just a strange epiphany. <laughs> a keen perception, nonetheless. Thank you, and I'm sure that the children's lives will be. Uh, quite thankful for you as well. Rajar uh, also gets ousted out as the rest of you leave. <laughs> and he's out, 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 and you watch, he's just like, but, but, and he's still holding the Morton pestle, and it's just the door <laughs> closes behind him. I mean, guys, just still standing there, and that's how you do a pretzel motion, and then if we do it this way, you can pull into X Factor. Oh, sorry, I, what happened? He, he hands the Morton pestle to you, Gaius. I do not understand. It was like she was speaking in tongues or something. Well, at least she was happy. The way you move, Your Grace, it is unlike anything I've ever seen, and I fought Berserkers in the war. You have a practice, grace, and understanding of your craft, as does your wife. She fights a different battle, and I know you noticed her strength in that. Of course. She is strong. I already told you as such. I do not understand her ways, but this is how she says she goes to war. 
And so I must support that, of course. Still, I wish that... You see him kind of purse his lips a little bit. Must this take all night? I see. It would, I imagine she would be quite taxed with her attention, not only in this, but also in your brother's, uh, oh, sorry, your sister, technically, uh, her birth. He mutters under something under his breath a little bit. You know what actually, did he say? <laughs> yeah, what you know he say what would, would actually, I believe, make her very happy? He raises a brow at that. I was going to say that. <laughs> He's going to hold the griffin egg. Do you know much of them? Eggs? They are delicious. Griffin. Very good. No! 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 <laughs> Indeed they are, but this is a very special egg. The Hurtland families, they... When they're full adults, they are given griffin eggs to, to raise and eventually to ride. They are powerful and magnificent creatures. Surely you've seen the griffin symbol upon the uh, Hearthland flag. Yes, I've met their pets upon my visitation to Hearthland. I am familiar with their iconography and the beasts at which they keep. If you find ways to not only help nurture, but potentially raise this creature, not only will I am certain you will get another side of a uh, that you may not know, but you can raise a power powerful beast to help protect her. Um, another thing too, I think by letting her fight her own war, she'll be even more happy with you that, that you let her fight it fully and, and without any sort of, of complications or, or distractions. It would mean a lot to her. Did she tell you about our fight? No. Oh. Good. He's shit. <laughs> it's a shit. <laughs> I'm well, gonna let that I've one said go. too much. I am going to let that go. I. <laughs> we have already had this discussion. Early on, I did understand her ways and her worship of this medicine woman, but I understand how important it is to her. And while her mercy is sometimes unfounded, I have come to understand and respect her methods. Your Grace. If I may ask, what do you usually do to unwind? Uh, you watch as he goes a little red in the face. <laughs> Monty, I, 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 honest to God, I thought you was going to say frame one, kill a man. I, I was about to say, he was probably going to turn around, fight! <laughs> um, what do you do when you're not fighting? Fight more! <laughs> can you ask what my second favorite thing is, please? <laughs> yeah. Well... Have you had a drink before with your comrades? I have, not in a while. Are you inviting me to drinks? If you would be so generous to join us in a drink, a story, and I can tell you more about these griffins. Very well. I will tell my brother that we will have dinner tomorrow, then, instead. Tonight we shall drink. Uh oh. Sir Gobble looked towards the group like, I oh, did it? <laughs> mm hmm. You did it. <laughs> then we will see you tonight. Very well. I will inform my brother, and I will prepare for drinks. Strigal will kind of huddle up with Gaius. All right, we have to eat a lot of food before we arrive tonight. We I am making we? friends. <laughs> God, Gaius, Gaius mutters to you, we, who the fuck is we? Oh, uh, ignoring that, he's going to... 180 his head. Uh, can you invite Redmond as well? Very well. Yes. <laughs> the, the Gaius, well. Gaius is giving you the fucking must you face from Penny Arcade. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine the, the Final Fantasy victory theme is playing on a kazoo right now. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly off key. <laughs> right. Meet me in the kitchen in 30 minutes. Damn! 30 minutes! You better eat real it's damn fast. Right, how many it's carbs can I eat in 30 minutes? I mean, you, you guys have had a full day. You trained, you went out grocery shopping, you came back, dealt with a beetle, and then you basically did medicine for the entire evening. Where, it's like, it's like where is the old now. Wendy's? Ma Monty, Monty, I just want yep. you to know that whole time, I, I wanted just a picture of Aya looking to the rest of the party. Spectacles! We need to cook! <laughs> 
All right, how much bread can I eat in 30 minutes? And is bread poisoning a thing? Um, I don't know. It was a joke for today. It's called <laughs> diabetes. Very quickly and probably fearful, uh, a very nice spread is created in the kitchen for you, a private seating area. Uh, specifically for you, as uh, you are invited to dinner by Rejar, and uh, uh, do you guys want the rest of the Rowe family to join at all, or do you want to just? I mean, if they want, if they want I mean, to, sure. if we really want to make it a party. Well, I think I honestly, yeah, invite everyone. Yeah, this will, this, this will get some. This will hopefully yeah. release any yeah. steam that's left. Yes, in. yes, Dragal. Let's invite the royal family to the fucking Waffle House in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, listen, exactly. listen, it's their yes. house. Fight Landy. We're, we're not inviting them to dinner so much as saying you're allowed to eat in your own kitchen. <laughs> uh, again, not a lot of fanfare, but the, the spread is quite plentiful. There are large hams. Uh, there are also like, you know, scalloped potatoes. There is just tons of decanters, of wine and other liquids. Uh, you also see that there is a myriad of baked fruits, like baked apples with golden sugar Ooh. sprinkled on top. You also see what appears to be lots of bread at your request. Uh, several breads that seem to be not really loaves, but they seem to be like braided breads. Uh, or flat breads that seem to be cooked on one side flat. Uh, and you see that the people working in the kitchen actually have like a large, like almost like pot that is attached to fire, and they, like, stick the bread onto the inside of it, and it seems to be a Delvarian staple, specifically, in the way that they're mm. cooking it. Uh, however, as you all kind of approach, uh, you notice that the Crown Prince and uh, Layla are there and seem to be uh, discussing, um, and you also notice that Redmond is there. He seems to be, um, like, washing his hands, I guess. Uh, you notice that there are, like, little shavings of something on him. Uh, not, like, confetti, mm. but, like, there's little pieces of stuff around. Uh, and I would say Gaius, because of your just base intelligence, you get the sense that Redman was probably working on making weapons. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. As I was about to say, down. metal shavings. Can we smell his hands to determine what kinds of weapons? <laughs> Can Stragall smell his hands? Oh my <laughs> fucking not for god. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> As you all kind of take a seat, you notice that the Crown Prince and Layla are not partaking of any wine. Um, sure. Obvious He's reasons for Layla. Too? Holy crap. He seems to be, based on what you guys can tell, he seems to be very loving, and you get the sense it's probably it's out solidarity. Of solidarity. Sure, yeah. yeah, solidarity. yeah, yeah. Um, however, Rare Jar enters and kind of slams down some more very large stopped bottles onto the table. And sits down and joins as all of you settle in for a bit of a feast. Uh, the food is plentiful. It is delicious. Uh, there's also more of that soup. The sandworm soup, as it were. Uh, that Ooh. seems to only get better as the days go by. In like this a worm is the gift that keeps on giving. It really is, yeah. Uh, however, as you all begin to sit... Uh, you know, Adrian, being the crown prince, acknowledges you all and has <clears throat> drinks poured for you all and yeah. kind of turns and he goes, I take it Lady Aya is not joining us tonight. He's having an epiphany right now. You see. And he looks over towards his brother and Rare Jar is just kind of flicking some of the food on his plate, just like mm, kind of upset. <laughs> he turns back, he goes, again, I apologize for the firmness of our initial meeting and I've Heard good things about you and your works and efforts. Though we have not as much trade with Martorallo or Eastern Vale, it is, however, quite interesting to us that you face such interesting threats. Uh, no, no. It, 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 there is no need to apologize for the uh, difficulties of perhaps our first contact with each other. If anything, it has strengthened us in our resolve in our purpose being here, and it is certainly give me a different perspective of your wonderful country. I must ask, out of personal curiosity, you are to report back to uh, Herthland, Master Stigal, correct? Uh, no, actually. I'm not here under any official guidance other than to deliver a message towards Lady Aya, which we accomplished. I can report or not report anything I see fit. 
Perhaps then I should ask you what your assessment is of this arrangement, assuming that the royal family would not question you upon your return to Hearthland. I assume that is simply a matter of fact. The royal family is, of course, suspicious of most things, um, given the war that our peoples had fought uh, against each other, and they are no doubt suspicious of Aya's uh, well-being. Well but I can put those suspicions to rest, and I certainly will when I arrive back at the capital. I see. I think the most important thing is that there are threats to the north of Delvaria that I do not believe the royals of Hurtland are aware of. Hmm. Our constant feud with Treskaldin is never-ending. They assume Delvaria to be a dumping ground of criminals. Some of them reform and find their way under our fold, and others become our enemies very quickly. Some simply are murdered and butchered by the gnolls, while others come to command them with great strength. Some even become our esteemed royal sorcerer. <laughs> ah. Well, about that, I know there's still many avenues and wounds that must heal before... I would imagine a formal allyship between our peoples could ever even be considered, but Hurtland and Delvaria working together could stem that tie against that conflict and end it for good. While such a vision would be achievable and would be most comforting, I imagine that the royal family still has their own affairs to sort in order. Of course, but word from... Uh, the crowned prince, that such an alliance is even possible would go a long way, if the time Still, is to come. such is the jurisdiction of my father, who is not home at the moment. It is something I may pose to him. He will want to hear of your arrival here and the information that we've gained forthwith. But I digress. We are I... not here to discuss politics. Your brother has an impressive display of martial prowess, yes. But I wanted to see what he was like when he uh, allowed himself to drink and tempt to be merry. So, with that in mind, your grace, what is the... what is your most proudest kill? And it looks towards Rejirar. Mm, he leans back and thinks about it for a while. There was a beast when I was a young boy. A giant man that traveled from Hvut Plata down to these lands where it was more comfortable and warm. Ganjifa asks for help. And given that Layla is from Ganjifa, and you watch as Rajor actually politely bows to her, and she just kind of looks at him like, mm hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, you bow to me. <laughs> he back, and he goes, It was a beast with a single ocular eye, mightier than ten men. Aww. I ripped the eye from its socket in hand to hand combat, blood fonting out of its face like a geyser. It was a beautiful display. He what weapon did you me. use? My bare hands, I just said. Impressive. What about you? What have you killed? Well, I am not a wizard who studies on well, solely within the bounds of a library, but that of the battlefields around Avaria. While I do not prize myself in kills, I will say that perhaps the largest thing we had fought, you already well know of. The giant creature within the deserts that lurked. Sandworm. Hmm. My beasts, they are. They've always been here. It is said that ancient warriors could tame them and ride upon their backs. Such is not the way anymore. Hmm. What of you? He turns towards you, Gaius. What is the mightiest thing that you have fought? Hmm. I can't regale the mightiest because that's too large of a scale to gauge, uh, to gauge. And my journey to strength is only just beginning. But I can tell you of my most proudest one, the one with my comrades in hand. We fought a bird that could turn people to stone. A bird that can turn people to stone? Aye, ah. with, its, with its gaze it could petrify. Yes, the cockatrice. Iskan is the... like eight. eight. That was the very lighter. first thing we fought together. 
like to imagine Eastkan like is lifting up like a potato and then he stops and the potato it just falls, falls, falls off, off his fork. Yeah, and he just kind of <laughs> gently places it down. Shrill violin starts playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> there are many beasts we've worn uh, never changes. <laughs> There are many beasts that I could regale. I wish I had my book, because it probably would have listed them off. Your oh. sorcerer has it at the moment. Is that what he was so absorbed in? We had invited him to dinner as well, but he simply shooed us away. Uh, he, In exchange for his wisdom, he asked if he could peer into my book. Layla kind of smiles, and she goes... Yes, he shooed my servants away, telling them that it's getting to the good part, and we took that to that he was enthralled with something, but... Guy, guys, his ears flop in front of his face, hiding blush. <laughs> oh. Well. I will say, uh, Rejrar, the story you told about this man with a singular eye... I know you saw me as one of a warrior who uses a battle axe, but I'm... The reason why I was so, I guess, aggravated with you when we first met, or at least after our first encounter with having to do training, I guess I have this weird misconception when it comes to honor, as I prefer, if I use these, he like holds his hands up and like balls a fist, I would prefer to use these rather than my weapons. My weapons are work. This is the true sport. This is the true honor I seek. Hmm. To know that one's strength alone, not one's uh, expensive steel, won the day is a sense of strength itself. Oh, don't get it backwards. Having the massive amounts of steel is still a very huge pride, and I'm... Oh, I can't wait to see the look on my father and my uncle's face when I show them the monster we slain, and it's mounted on the wall of the city show the pieces of it into a forgery of a weapon. I can only imagine what they would think. But... Rorschach Rorsch kind of like rips off just like a bunch of meat off of a bone and kind of chews. And he looks towards you and he goes, I assume once A is done with your task that you return home. That is unless uh, you had need of us elsewhere. I have no need of you. Yeah, he, watches, ever... he watches, like, you see, you hear the sound of, like, a boot hitting a leg, and then Rorschach kind of looks down and then looks towards his brother, and the brother's kind of like, like, just said something really rude, and he's just like, huh? If that would ever change, for whatever reason, please, do not hesitate to send a request. I would be happy to help Tavaria. You are fine. We have what we need. However, your training will come to an end. I feel as though my lessons haven't been imparted. I saw Perhaps wisdom is... in them. Did you now? I, though, I guess in a way I had to conjure it from my own self. I know my comrades, I can't speak for them. I know they seem to feel that some of it may be a little bit on the odd end, confusing spectrum. However, I guess it's just because of the way I grew up and the training I've received from my family that there's always something to glean from it, from anything you do. Your actions are, your actions will be useful somewhere along the line, even if you can't see it now. We come from places that have very different rules, and it took some adjusting to understand more of what those rules are here, but I believe we all understand them well. But more oh. than that, you, you asked fools. what are... You are fools. There are no rules. Warrior battles take you contain no rules. Indeed, even that is a lesson that we have learned here. But you ask again right, what uh, largest battles we have fought, and in truth, you. Though we did not win, not even by close, I am still proud that we fought. There's a strange sense of honor to that that I hold, that there it is. Hmm. If I may, it, it, it's interesting because I'm one of those that could not understand what you were trying to teach, but I think I kind of get it now. You're putting us in impossible situations devoid of all the things that we were good at. And I think the thing that I kind of learned was what it would be like to stare at your own death. 
it's not necessarily so much of a training of what we can do. At least that that wasn't my takeaway. It was more along the lines of understanding what it meant to look death in the face and not panic. While there may be situations where we would be as helpless as you put us, there may be other situations where we may not be as helpless. But because of your training, we may have a clear head. More creative ideas might flow and we get out of whatever situation we're in. If that makes any sense. Rotrak kind of sighs and you watch as he picks up the, one of the bottles, uncorks it and pours some of the alcohol uh, and kind of recorks it. And he looks back towards the group of you. First, he looks at uh, you, Otho. You, Otho. Yes. My wife speaks highly of your vernacal. <laughs> Vernac vernacular? <laughs> I'm what the fuck is the word that she used? I'm flattered she thinks highly of my vernacular. Vernacular, that was what she used. He kind of shudders at the word and looks towards you. You could talk yourself out of most problems. He sort of I imagine he has a glass of wine. He sort of stares down into it and he swirls it idly. Most of them. But there are situations where you cannot succeed with that technique. Do you want to know why I hate people like you? You told me earlier. You always have a way out. And he points a finger towards you. Rules should not stop you from that. I told you not to bring a weapon with you. You shouldn't have listened to me. He looks down into his glass and then he looks back up. Perhaps. But rules are what separate us from the animals. Unfortunately, some of the people you may face might be animals. I know that for a fact. Indeed. So, you must always have an out even at the cost of your own humanity. For you and your friends, it may be the difference between life and death. He kind of looks down the line. You. Looks towards you, Kai. Expecting you to get hit. No! <laughs> <laughs> Just look, you're already pouring I'm, out the lunch money. Uh, yeah, Kai, Kai mentally <laughs> flinches. <laughs> oh, no more. He just goes two for flinching and punches you twice. <laughs> oh, <God>. And <laughs> that's the remainder of my HP. Thanks for playing. I'm going to bed. You're angry, aren't you? Yeah. Do you think that anger makes you stronger? No. Do you want to know why? I can't say why, because I don't want to get hit again. <laughs> I will not hit you. My sister-in-law is here. Oh, well, in that case, you mother- <laughs> well, In that case, pulls out a scroll. <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> 99 things I hate about Rare Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I've been keeping a notepad. <laughs> Let me tell you advice. I've had many warriors approach me, frothing at the mouth and furious and angry. But no one truly powerful is capable of such destructive rage. Find a way to solve it. Resolve your focus and you shall not falter. You. Uh, oh, looks so you. Oh, Otho, you will, you will notice that he, he, he almost goes to say something, but very deliberately looks at you and then Shrigal and doesn't say anything as he continues. You. He looks towards you, Iskan. Who is 
been pushing that potato around the plate, trying to find an excuse to put it on a fork again. And he looks up. I had tried to find a member of the Green Thorns. They were not keen to arrive. I have petitioned them for information. If our paths ever cross, I will be sure that information gets to you. Better still, I will find a way to make you meet with them. I... Uh... Thank you. I know nothing of druidic practices. All I know is that you like some elf god and flowers and squirrels. Mm. He just kind of shrugs at that. Dude, he knows when what he, when he is? says squirrels, Iskan visibly shakes and audibly shudders. <laughs> you could have them come to Vison Vale, if that's the case. Not the squirrels. Potentially. I'm putting the cart before the horse. I don't know how long it will take for Aya to find you a cure. You. He looks towards you, Milo. Oi. Delvaria once had a battle in which she wore glamorous armor to fight a most wicked of foes, an evil magician. It had such seas on magic that it set the armor ablaze, and she barely escaped with her life. Armor can be a boon, but it can also be a bane. Hot stuff. A, Go ahead, sir. It is a terrible burden. Well, I can understand that. And your training made that very, very apparent. Do not let the cost of that burden be your life. I understand. I have a question. Yes. I don't mean to sound ignorant your lessons or what have you, but my training seemed to be more, I don't know, tailored to be more fun in my regard. Was that how it seemed? That was not my, my intention. You are strong. Hmm. That much is plain. You do not lack for physical strength. You seem wise. But... Oh God, I do. <laughs> peacefully calm, as it were. However, your strength cannot be bound by your own self. You must extend past yourself. Do you know why I am strong? How many men have you killed? It does not matter how many men I have killed. I do not fight for myself. None of my battles are my own. I fight for my father, the king. I fight for my brother. And I fight for Aya. That strength that extends past myself is grander than myself. And so yours must be as well. And you that is fight why for... you, you so fiercely protect her. Of course, I must. That goddess she worshipped had left her weak. And so I must be the one who raises to the occasion where the gods have failed. And the same must be said of you. Your companions are strong, but you must extend past and think of them as yourself. I taught you how to carry a great weight because that is the burden of a warrior. You must fight for others, not yourself. To do this selfish in the way of villainy. Evil spurs from that strength. A selfish strength. He kind of scoffs and then drinks some of his wine, seemingly angry about something else. Well, I hope. My, oh, go ahead. To, I suppose, not only a lovely evening of getting to understand each other more, but and he'll kind of raise a glass for everyone to raise as well. To lessons, yeah. new friends, Delvaria. And the beasts that we challenge to fight to our best ability. Here, Hi. Here. here. You watch as everyone kind of brings their glasses together. Here. Oh, here. here. Okay. You continue in conversation. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I imagine you guys go over, you know, certain affairs of 
peace and veils, not plight, but like, oh, we're trying to get the orchards back in order. We're trying to do X and mm -hmm. Y. Logistical yep. conversation. Mm -hmm. Finery and things like that. Is there anything anyone would like to ask the crown prince and the uh, crown princess as they are sitting and enjoying? You can see, so Lila wants to drink so bad, and she's like, oh. 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 Throughout, throughout oh. most of the conversation. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, but I, I can just pose the question and we can answer it as, as need be, but I was more concerned to hear what they wanted to ask us personally since we're right. outsiders. They kind of, like, uh, discuss uh, different things, eventually, you know, leading back. And you watch as the crown prince actually leans and he goes, Ah, oh, yes, that, of course. We were curious about your enemies because we have reasons. We've uh, come across such individuals in the past. We actually had a proposition for you, perhaps, given the nature that we now hear of the state of Eastonvale, as well as your lordship and a castle, a grand home made of stone we've heard legends of. By all means, we'd love to hear it. Many of our berserkers are trained in the way of martial combat. But the ever-presence of the Blightwing and the Ash Plague has of great concern to us. We were wondering, perhaps, if you would be willing to take some of our Berserkers back with you to Eastonvale to train in your country. You know, I've been thinking... something of a similar line. Ah, great minds think alike, as it said. Hmm. Your Grace, I... I do recall... Uh, sorry, Master Otho. I, just as a reminder, there will be potentially halberdiers also in the area to assist with your bandit problem. Perhaps this could be that unity you speak of, Master Stigal, says the Crown Prince. Neutral ground upon which to form a unity, perhaps. If the undead Nothing... is a uniting threat... Maybe more the reason to have berserkers there. Nothing brings people together like a common enemy. Indeed. Uh, 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 Monty? Yeah? What's Redman doing this whole time? He's like eating ham. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he's going My man's is just enjoying the, the food. Yeah, he's, he's just listening He's enjoying the drama. How, my, how desperate is, is the crown prince and uh, princess for for alcohol uh the the princess is but you get the sense that she's it's more of just like a oh please but she also knows <laughs> that she's having a baby so it's more I of just like a, i was about to say yeah i would offer like i'm not sure if this would work mechanically i would offer restoration to let her drink if she need if she wanted to it does, it doesn't, that's not how that works i'm afraid <laughs> okay the alcohol okay. you can drink while pregnant <laughs> Ooh, wait if you if you removed the poison part of the wine, would she be able to drink basically no. non-alcoholic? What, <laughs> what if we temporarily remove the It's, it's kind of like coffee. Like, I'm going to let you guys in on a little thing. When you are pregnant, there's certain things you should not eat or drink because it, it's not well, You haven't answered it's, my question, Monty. I didn't okay. hear it. What if we temporarily remove the baby? <laughs> again, again, it was it was a emergency C section. Yeah. This well, was well, an alcoholic. It was a world and magics related question. Yeah. I was, yeah, no, that's right. Unfortunately, unfortunately, worked. mechanically will not work. Unfortunately, okay. Let's just use rope yeah. trick. It'll work. No. Uh, oh God! We, stop everything. I, okay. Now, now we have to go around the horn and pick one spell to make the situation even worse. Catapult. No. Uh, <laughs> see, I was gonna banishment. say knock, but that's even worse. Oh, oh my god! Oh, uh, banishment. Your alignment is teetering on the edge. <laughs> this is above game. Oh, it doesn't matter. I, know, I, I mean, in real life too. I'm just <laughs> well, af after all of this, I feel like the worst one will be speak with dead. But we'll get oh, no. oh. As you well, all, for Zeno teed it up. I just had to hit it. Uh, Redman just seems to be enjoying the conversation and the food. He's just vibing. Um, he watches uh, the crowd prince turns and goes, I believe there are some warriors who are new recruits who spoke highly of your talents. Hawk and the boys, as they yeah. are known. Let's oh, go. Yes. We Hawk and the boys. They yep. We postured the, the idea of this, perhaps this exchange, 
Um, and they seem to be speak quite positively about you. Oh yes, they fought very well with us. They have quite they the were... talent for the fighting styles of Delvaria, but perhaps to expand out beyond us and learn how to fight such undead threats would be a boon for the country. You undead would... as well as bandits and brigands that need putting in their place. Again, a foreign concept of which we do not know very much of. Knowles and other such deviants we do, but bandits are... They're basically uh, the same thing. A foreign uh, concept. Bloodthirsty animals and the like. So, uh, you would be okay with sending your fresher berserkers? They seem to know of you quite well. And I assume that would be a mutual appreciation, unless I am mistaken. I have no complaints, I just want to make sure. None whatsoever. Of course. In I'll, the history... I, I was just gonna say, uh, there are some odd things that have been happening in Eastonvale. Nothing violent or threatening, but definitely <laughs> odd. So as long as they're okay with that. I mean, we do have that skeleton town, remember, guys? Oh, yeah, but we're not fighting them. No, 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 we're not fighting them, but we need to make sure that if we, if we, if we... <laughs> If we decide to let some, some berserkers come in, we need to let them know everything that's been going on so they don't accidentally mistake, you know, people minding their own business as monsters. Of course, they'd be under your command or any battle master of which you have employed. Hmm. They probably could stand to learn a lot from the outsider. The outsider? You watch as everyone stops and immediately turns as you say oh that. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, you I imagine, the magic word! I imagine we all look at each other and then back at them. Strigal's gonna pull out his, like, weird s signature he got from the outsider. Oh my god, that's right, you did get his autograph. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> you Redman turns, he goes, You have the outsider under your employ? Yes. Well, yes. A man who fights with no eyes but can see the world around him is quite the impressive combatant. I we should see how he handles wolf. wolf. He knows the ambassadors of Eastonvale by a first name basis. Truly. And you watch as even Rarger our turns and seems kind of impressed. Legends of his fighting prowess have reached our ears. The man is quite talented. A wanderer. Someone easily chronicled in stories. If Delvaria was alive, I'm sure he would have been one of us most fascinating and most close companions. You find yourself with a strong ally. His heroics are well known without these lands. Fighting well, can... for no reward or no glory, only to do what is right, is impressive. He is every bit the fierce warrior and honorable man that you describe him to be. To have him in your employ, we can entrust you with anything now, I feel. Perhaps that is too high a praise, but to know that you have such associations is certainly awe-inspiring, to say the least. Mershar even kind of nods, and he goes, Surprised you have not trained with him first. Oh, we have. It's different kinds of training, but we have. Mm -hmm. Kind of shrugs. Again, and in the curiosity, though, uh, it's interesting to hear that he is fighting the undead. I imagine that it is such a permanent threat that even the outsider feels it necessary to learn things, to fight it. Strigal is... Uh, go ahead. Huh? I don't know if this will be morbid enough for you, for me to say this, but... Until we... Uh, until our deaths, we always constantly learn. Merger are nods at that, actually, in, in like... Agreement. Speaking of hmm. which, Strigal is going to pour a stiffer drink for Rear Girard as well as for himself. Um, kind of slide it in front of Rear Girard. I have to know. I mean, I was there that day, uh, the day of your wedding, but I have seen the captain of all Halperdiers, the most legendary of us, take on large foes and hordes alike. How did you do it? Albertiers prefer close combat. Getting in close to them immediately puts them at a disadvantage. Right, but I've seen him push away and combatants that have gotten close with his uh, the haft or the end of the halberd to try and make distance. Were you really just that fast? It was. It was made out of wood. You think that would stop me? No. But still. There you go. Oh my god, my man's a 
fucking geef mame. <laughs> he was an older he's, man. He's... I'm younger. I use that to my advantage. He's not as good in close combat, so I immediately branched the gap between us. He got a few good swings in, but if I just simply shoulder them and shrug them off and get into his space, I immediately was in a greater advantage. I've never known the man to boast, but I've also never seen the man more humbled than that day. You fought beyond well, a legendary warrior in your own right. But that being said, I can say the biggest disadvantage of for him was not his age. Oh. You asked what I would do if someone were to breach within the reach of the halberdier. And the answer is, <laughs> I would likely fall the same fate. But that is not how Hurtland fights. The best way to defend the halberdier, once you get past the axe head and the weapon, there is another halberd from the man behind you, and to your right, and to your left. We do not fight alone. We are many in number. True, that is the advantage of Hearthland. That which we acknowledge. Fighting for each other makes you strong. Indeed. Perhaps if that man had another at his side, he wouldn't have lost his arm. Uh, that he still fights on, in his own way. His Fighting daughter for his... is strong-willed. Indeed. But still, have another drink. Like I said, we're here not to <laughs> find politics, even though we do seem to find it regardless, but to enjoy ourselves. Oh, that's stiff. Indeed. Mm. He looks towards Gaius like, do you want some? Gaius like looks at you with like a with like the face that just says, Did you even have to fucking ask? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Holds the cup out. Strigal will pour one for you. You're not suggesting that this is any kind of competition, are you? Gaius turns to you. Well, you said it. Let's go. Strigal's gonna pinch the like the bridge of his beak. Yeah, all right. Oh boy, here we go. Well, then I'm it in. Is, it is said that Dovar oh. himself could drink five kegs of the hardest dwarven ale. Then we shall endeavor to do the same. Perhaps not alone, but as a group. Very well. You guys drinking competition? Are you guys okay with going a bit later tonight, by the way? Are you guys okay with that? I'm good. Because uh, yeah. this is our last session before October, so I... I, 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 I I'll, I'll flip it. I'll flip it. Redmond, will you join us? Nope. I need my good hands. Can't be hungover tomorrow. I'm working on your weapons. Oh. oh Very boy. well. I also need to uh, let some people know that you're drinking tonight. Uh-oh. Hopefully we won't need a corner. <laughs> I just hope you like games. So you watch as he walks away. <laughs> oh, fucking damn it. What does that mean? Uh, sorry, Zito and Gaijin, are you okay with going a bit later? I, I got work, but as long as, as I can dip as soon as the session's over, I'm good. Yeah, if you can grant me the same, that's fine. You got it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Drinking competition. Let's fucking go. Who's in? Yep. Me. Um, All right. E-scan? Yeah. E-scan. <laughs> For sure, Rick. This good luck, guys. Listen. Uh, I, I can roll <laughs> intelligence instead, right? No. Yeah, I was okay. going to say. <laughs> can I drink with my perception? No, you okay. can't drink with your eyeballs. So, Iskan, uh, I'm assuming <laughs> Gaius is in in Strigal. Yes. Yeah, All right, so what if I catapult the liquid <laughs> out? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the consistency of the 5e <laughs> catapult. As you guys begin to lay out drinks, Rarish returns, he goes, what's the price? Oh. <laughs> this is the part we didn't calculate. Whoops. Oh, you wanted to go for a prize. Why not? Why else compete than to conquer and achieve something? The spirit of friendship? Gaius shuffles through his belongings. If you beat me, you watch as he unshoulders his boar axe and he places it on the table. Uh, oh no. What? Oh. Oh. 
fuck. Oh no. Oh fuck. It's okay. You're fine. Number okay. three, buddy. Mm. Number three. You just spin them all and you take off. <laughs> that's the, that's the... I... If we if if there was ever a time for Monty to go on a nat one spree, this would be it. Yeah, we want that axe. I, I have. Hmm. I have a I have a prize idea. You and he looks towards you guys. You can write. I I can write giant. And he can speak good words. And he watches. He points towards Otho. Just raises an eyebrow. If I win, you shall write a poem for me to speak to Aya. Shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, was I mean, about to pull out his crossbow. We just slowly. I was about to say, if only someone in this party could write like a sea shanty or something like that, that'd be crazy. That is my prize. Okay. And if you're this gonna man put is your hammered. Axe on the table. If you're gonna put your their axe on the table, then absolutely. Drinks and you watch as like there's a tiny like you know like teenage girl who's like ah! and she like freaks out when he yells <laughs> no. at her and drops Aww. the container and she's like oh right away sir and you watch as she scampers off. Another smashes the mug on the ground. <laughs> right. Catapults it. As large these aren't like cups or glasses these are like horn tankards like Ooh, viking yeah. ass, like, horn tankards. i've got one sitting next to me right here yeah Good they choice. place them on the table uh kind of hand them off to you and you watch as a uh an older gentleman who seems to be one of the culinarian i keep dropping my dice what's wrong with stop me? it don't as do one of the it oh, culinarians oh, Definitely a retired warrior, uh, kind of brings over a large cask of what looks to be some sort of like brandy or like vodka equivalent, basically. And I would like everybody to roll me a constitution saving throw who's a part of the competition. As All right, okay. I'm gonna stand. Stragal, this is for Stragal. This is for Stragalia. <laughs> this is for Hartle. Let's get Stragalia. Oh, that nat Ooh. 20 on the other side. 20, side, flip 20. it. Roll one. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. <laughs> Inspiration, oh. please. I That's already used it. 14 for no. each gun. It is a very oh, hard, hard ale. As. Yeah, he's fucking fine. As you pour it back, Stragal immediately are like, oh no, this is just bad. I'm gonna die. I've made a bad decision. You've made Stragal's, a bad decision. Stragal's just gonna fall back on the bench and look where Redmond was and just be sad. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, all right, round two. And I would like to say, anyone who's not participating, roll me a perception check, please. Oh god. Interessante. Interessante. The Stragal count. Oh, that out. nat 20 on this side, Zito. God. <laughs> 18, though. Okay. 15. Okay. That's a 19 for East Gen's constitution saving throw. Hang on, my thing's going really slow. Oh my god, Otho. That's a natural 20. <laughs> That's a nat 20, go. baby. 17. All right, hey, East stay in it. 17. All right, All right you guys 22. pass. You guys pass the DC 10 as you... Again, it's much more difficult. These aren't shots. They're, like, full-on, like, glasses of, like, not, like, hard liquor, but, like, it's close. Tankards. As you um. down it. Uh, as the drinking contest continues, Milo uh, and Otho, and did Kai roll, or is Kai just watch? Or, yeah, yeah Kai 50, did, he got a 15. 15. Okay, Kai, you don't notice, unfortunately, but uh, Milo and Otho... You notice currently peeking into the kitchen are a bunch of the berserkers. Oh, <laughs> kind of just peeking and waiting. And you notice too that Redmond is there, kind of waiting as if something's going to happen. <laughs> All right, so guys. So I always wanted you to teach me how to use my head fin to stab people like you do with your horns. Stop and keep drinking. You watch as Rare Gerard gestures Shoot. for another servant. That's, that's so yes, stupid. Oh, I only never talk so loud. Stragal's gonna walk up to to Gaius and like wipe the sweat off his brow and like massage his back. Like he's in this fight <laughs> corner. <laughs> you got this, brother. <laughs> you got this, kid. <laughs> oh, his, 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 his left chunk is weaker than his right. Let's go. Ooh, no. Oh yeah, he's fine. 
Oh my god, I need a nat one from you, Monty. Could, could I use Master of Tactics? <laughs> wow. You know to what? give him sure. the help action? You, no, it, you, you, know, you know how we can fucking make this work? You tell me to twist it as I'm swerving like Das Boot. <laughs> oh there you go. Drink it like Das Boot. Das Boot. Das Boot. Das Boot. I don't know if I pass this time, guys. Caught and save with advantage. For oh, me guys. again? Yeah, oh, we guys. already rolled him. Oh, you already rolled him. We I'm so sorry. Him. All right. Unfortunately, E scan, the DC was 13 it. in round three. Uh oh. I knew it. As uh -oh. unfortunately, <laughs> you immediately are like, your world is swimming. Oh. And you're like, I probably mm. should stop. I just want to say, it was an honor serving with you all. I'm going to lie down now. Family guy falls over. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see what ASC is in a bunch of fuckers like you. But you can hold your liquor, and that has my respect. A drink, goat man, it's you and me. All right, oh, you boy. fuck, let's go. <laughs> 16. Drink the beer from the glass. Hang in there. That is All boring. Right, you both das boot. Oh, yeah. swing back and take a drink. And you're like, oh my god. Oh my god. As you just meet the DC of 15. Ooh. Hell yeah. As we One head more. on to the sixth round of alcohol. Oh my god. Can I, can I Sabal's gonna cut him. Out? Can I take that Master of Tactics here? <laughs> Can I take the DOS? I mean, technically, it's every round, so. Oh, fuck, that's right. Okay, here we go. No! Oh, 13. No. 13. Ooh, Razor actually rolled really low, but he still passes. No. As you take your next drink, you just cannot handle it, Gaius, and you feel the drink uh... fall from your hand and you just keel over. And you watch as Rarisha is like, yes, I win. Winner, and, the executioner of Delvaria. He, right. he watches you yell at him. He actually clasps a hand over your beak. Okay. And you just Don't see his, so loud. His, his smile <laughs> fades and he kind of sways side to side. And it's almost like a tree. Like there's like a <laughs> kind of lean to him as he sways side to side. You can see him look kind of sad and almost pouty. I miss my wife. <laughs> oh, i have okay. I guess we should we here. should go see yeah. her. Can I can, I can I ride can I, can I ride this on you guys real quick? Yeah, right. Guys, guys pulls out the piece of paper and starts beginning to write, and he says it out loud. And I hope to God that everyone will forgive me as I butcher the language, but I'm going to attempt to do it. I'm going to try to speak dwarvish, and if you can guess what I am saying, you fucking kick so much ass. Oh my god, go for it! I'm here for it! Trithragas Nakuma Lesbroth Hak Nakuma Zakan Orchin All God Nakuma Nakuma Ert Trithrag Ak Nakuma Oh god Please tell me you fucking got that It was in the inflection I... Where's my, where's my, where's my, where's my, I heard Nakama. You want me to just fucking say it? Nakama. Yeah, say it. I, okay, so that translates to, uh, ride wife. God damn it. <laughs> god damn it. Kill wife. Wife, Think about wife. But I hate it. Regret. <laughs> I fucking hate you, but I love you at the exact same time. Right. Razor lets go of you, Sturgall, almost a little too forcefully, and you kind of have to kind of balance yourself. And he's just like, hey, uh, and you watch as he like struggles out of the door, stumbling. Sturgall is going to go with him to like slowly and drunkenly blind leading the blind towards the room. <laughs> All right. As does you guys follow him? Yeah, I've or... got a, I've got, I've got three rounds of Lester Restoration if need be. So right. yeah. As cool. as you guys proceed to follow him, Mr. Gall, you follow him. Guys, do you follow him drunkily? Yep. All right, Eskin, are I? You're also. I'm gonna drunk. need a cart, yeah. but I will also follow. So Eskin, Gaius, and Mr. Gall, you follow her are out. Otho and Kai and Milo, as you guys go to exit, you are grabbed almost assassin style and pulled away. As you see. All of the Delvarian Berserkers, about 20 of them, hiding behind the other side of the building. And they kind of let go of you, and they're like, 
and Redmond kind of leans out and goes, I am so happy you guys are here. Do, do they let Would us you like keep to elaborate? Falling? Yeah, they let you go. Okay. When Rerdrar Ragnus gets drunk, he gets a little <laughs> needy, let's just say. The snake juice? Oh, I think yeah. that was a question. <laughs> the snake juice? The snake juice? He's, the snake he's, juice. he's all drunk, so he's just like, huh? You're not with them. Juice. You're, you're <laughs> with Rerdrar <laughs> stumbling oh, towards the apothecary. But he oh, just says it for no apothecary. Start all this I, shouts. They need her in the morning. What are you doing? She needs to be able to work. She's got shit to do. As as you all, as the rest of you, Milo, Otho, and Kai kind of look over, you see one of the berserkers currently like hiding behind him, Aya, who seems very perturbed at the moment. She's very much like, I have things I need to do. What are you doing? He's like, no, 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 it's fine. Stay here. You watch as Redmond kind of turns and goes, you guys want to play our favorite game? And what might that be? Huh? Princess keep away. Oh, no. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and oh, as he no. smiles a big I'm smile, sorry. that is where we're going to end the session for the night. Oh, oh no. God. As we you brought now... Redman back the second Strigal left? Wait. How dare you? Oh, wait. <laughs> Fucking keep Wait, away I need to know with... the rules of this game. I'm going to find out next after after October. No, you guys baby, are wait playing, a month. Oh my God. You're playing a game of You Princess can't tell me Pico I can fuck with Ragnus and then make me wait a month. <laughs> well, looks like Too she's bad. dead. It's <laughs> goblin time, uh, baby. It's goblin time, baby. What are we goblin? Gobtober. The extreme, the extreme sport of, of Princess Keepaway. The favorite, <laughs> I shit you not, the favorite pastime of Devarian Berserkers. It, it, it looks like we're trying to keep Aya from goblin anything. Is, hey. Uh, hey! Let's let Zito and Gaijin go. Yeah, let's yeah. let them go to Where bed. Where can they find you? And what are you up to, Gaijin Goomba? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Gaijin Goomba, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Hey, did you, did you like Enter the Gungeon? Do you wish it was with cute little animal friends and child sacrificing? Uh, huh? It's probably what I'm going to be doing soon. Uh, it was it was fun. Possibly more Halo 2 with Bosco, because that's always good, too. Uh, be sure yeah. to check out my new video. If you are a fan of samurais, cowboy, uh, spaghetti western, samurai movies, or Japan in the United States in general, I have a brand new video coming out, hopefully Friday, possibly Saturday, uh, talking about how they are... Damn it, they're basically the same thing. You wouldn't believe it, but they kind of are. I, 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 Look, I watched an old 70s movie and I got inspired. I don't know what else to tell you. It's pretty hype. Uh, please sponsor my good boy. Let me find my good boy. I need to find the link. I am so tired. No, I need, I need to you go need there. You need to buy this good boy. Please I'm buy sorry. the good... Please buy, buy my the good son. boy. Please buy my son. He's very underfunded at the moment, and I worry oh. for his health. Bye, son. Life good. <laughs> All right. Life good. Bye, son. <laughs> <laughs> life good. Also, Zeno, I appreciate your your dwarven thing. That was great. I, dude, I have yeah. to translate. I've I've been using this translator for so many fucking things for this campaign, and I'm so glad I get to. That's so good. All right, that's a me. All right, have a good bye, guys. Bye, hey, guys. Bye. 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 Yeah. And because he has to go as well, Zeno, where can they find you? What are you up to? Twitch.tv slash Zito. Uh, my chat has bullied me with kindness, uh, so I get to play cart for another five days. Uh, I also let any of my friends who I know have some, like, you know, stream etiquette who want to come in and crash my fucking streams up. I set up a little side server, so now that can happen. So now any of my friends can just be like, yeah, I want to, like, just talk shit in your ear while you play, while you try to concentrate on driving. And we ended up somehow creating OC, uh, One Piece OCs with Alfred. And then we ended up fucking like doing a random wiki article lookup while I was driving to fucking like create the powers. And one of my friends got Fred Durst. It was, it was a time. And you'll probably get more of that in the next five days. After that, it'll be more indie games. Uh, also, I have done a weird little thing that I think is actually working for the better. In terms of my homebrew content, uh, if you join my Patreon, there's a section in my Discord that now is 
specifically for giving you guys a master list of all the content at the ready. So as long as you sub to the Patreon and then go into my Discord, you get a channel specifically that gives you all the stuff that I have made, will be making, and new stuff that isn't on the Patreon just yet. So homebrew is getting done. Just I'm trying out this new way of formatting it because Patreon is really not that good when it comes to formatting like content all in one go. I'm trying new places. I, I want I want to sell, especially when Discord's actually going to be making a storefront soon. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. They are. Yep. Yeah. If, as long as we, as long as whatever server you have is counted as a community by Discord standards, you can create a storefront. Damn. If only I had a community. I have a gaggle instead. <laughs> That's me. I gotta go to bed. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta drive really early in the morning. Good night, Zito. Bye, Zito. Bye. 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 All right. Let's see. Uh, Mark Allen Jr. Ah. Where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me on Twitter and Blue Sky at Mark Allen Jr. Here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming, and you can follow the adventures of my fat sleepy cat bunny on Instagram at Chonk for Life. We got a three-hour music challenge stream on Sunday. I spin a wheel, a magical wheel of genres, and it probably doesn't pick hardcore again for the 12th time in a row, but maybe it will, and maybe we'll make a hardcore song, but I'll have three hours to do it if and we do. Come on, bye. What is that? The bass no, of a hardcore no, I said song. I'm making music, not whatever that was. It was a bass. Yeah. It was a bassy sound. Sure. Uh, okay. Come on by Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Time. <laughs> That's when that's going to happen. Uh, also, uh, it was just announced last week, I am going to be a guest at Anime LA from January 4th through January 7th, 2024. Uh, so, hey, you want to see me in the new year and also maybe check out some cool panels and animes and stuff? Check that out, Anime LA. I'll be there. Also, uh, I'll be a part of the Gobtober next Saturday. I'm very excited to bring Estic back, and I'll have to dig around in my notes to see if I can find the one brain cell he has. <laughs> You're going to need it. I don't know. I'm relying on other people to be smart. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's it for me for now. Um, I'll, I'll be here through October, but we're putting the blue lizard to rest for a month. It'll be fine. Hibernating. He'll be fine. Yeah, he's hibernating for the autumn. In that case, uh, let's move on to Xenalus Grim. Where can they find you? What are you up to? Because uh, come, I don't, I don't believe to a world. <laughs> world of wonder that you're. You won't be. Uh, you won't be joining us. For I know a for a full month. Yeah, but. It, if you if you like the me being a part of stories, you can jump in on Thursdays, where Monty will be running Dungeon of the Mad Mage at 7 p.m. PST yeah. over on Monty's channel, where I play a a human fighter, and we're pretty high level, all things considered, going through the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. So if you want that, that's there. Uh, Monday nights uh, over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Grim. You can find me running a story instead of playing it for Bosco and Monty, as well as a few friends. If you want the um, the previous or links to the previous VODs, you can check my Twitter for those, which is uh, at, underscore, at Zanny underscore Grim. And lastly, Tuesdays uh, at around noon PST, I play MechWarrior online for a few hours before in the evenings I jump on Halo Reach Lasso with Bosco, level one Eevee, and Artsy Heartsy, as we are potentially on the last level of Halo Reach Lasso, we're going to do the damn thing. Um, Holy shit. And if for some reason we can't do Halo Reach Lasso this week, we're going to do something else. Keep an eye out for that. That's me. Right on. Edward Bosco, where can they find you and what are you up to? You can find me on twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco and at Ed Bosco VA on both Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. You heard it here, folks. We're going to try to beat Lee, uh, Reach. 
Lasso edition. It's going to be great. I'm excited. Boy, I hope that happens. Uh, Thursday is Throwback Thursday. We're doing more Tomb Raider. Come check that out tomorrow. I'll be playing with Dawn and Bill like normal. Friday is wrestling, assuming all things go according to plan, and Yukaku. Uh, Wednesday, or sorry, Saturday, because I have my days right. Yakuza with Connor in the afternoon, and then Boulder's Gate at night, the uh, the last one before October, where I will also maybe hopefully be coming back for Gobtober, and I'm really excited so that Mark can continue to beat the crap out of me with his dumb boy. It's going to be great. Uh, I only hit <laughs> you like once. I don't know what you're talking about. Twice. Okay, fair. Three times a lady. <laughs> Three times a lady. Uh, Monday is more Mass Effect with Monty and Arkov, and then Tuesday, like we said, Halo Reach. Come check it out. We're hoping to finish it out. Our third lasso. I'm excited. Right on. Mm, I'm taking a look. Where can they find you? What are you up to? Hi. Uh, you can find me. Hi. Uh, I was gonna say, I'm still running D and I feel like if I don't like, if I'm not involved at least with one D and D game a week, I'll explode into just confetti. But uh, I, I have my my month off. I hope people enjoyed it. We didn't really end on a cliffhanger for this episode fully, but no, um, we absolutely did. It's a positive this is, cliffhanger. This is this the one. longest month of my <laughs> Unexpectables career, having to wait to see what hide the princess is. <laughs> just keep to, away is the best get, game and i must know get, the rules you get to play the, the favorite pastime of the berserkers but uh bowser's a fucking expert <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> bowser oh only God. no items yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh you can find me at monty glue on twitter you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash monty glue uh it is my month off but i will i will still try to you know maintain my streaming schedule however in the month of october i might just take a week off just to exist honestly i think go I, outside monty i should probably touch grass um <laughs> but tomorrow should hopefully be more dungeon of the mad mage and then friday hopefully more final fantasy and then monday more mass effect uh, I might do some pop-up streams. Honestly, like, I'm trying not to plan anything for my month off, but I really want to do another Pokemon tournament and, like, some other little things here and there that require a little bit of extra work. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's basically basically it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. This was kind of an eclectic one for me. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. That's a good role-play scenes in, too. Yeah. You guys, yeah. I will say yeah, this, you guys were definitely on, like, the right path with the menacing stuff. Like, I was like, oh, they're figuring it out. Excellent. Good, good. You kept going leaning into the magic a little bit, and I'm like, that's okay, though. But, like, ultimately, it came back around, and it was, it was cool. You guys are smart. Mm -hmm. um, we but, think yeah. we're smart. Hmm. That's our secret. We're always smart. Yeah. I, I will say this, too. Uh, there may or may not be a, a, a little extra bonus stream for the Unexpectables from me in October as Pardon? well. Pardon? Pardon? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, wor I'm working on something for uh, perhaps a charity event. Maybe. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe for a charity event. Maybe. We'll, we'll see ah. what happens. Mm -hmm. Keep you guys posted on that. Yeah. But I digress. You know, you should live, Gress. You're right. You're so right, Mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh you took me a minute. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what the hell's wrong with my... Oh. <laughs> I was that woman with the equations for that briefest of yeah. moments. I was like, huh? Oh, who? <laughs> Winona Ryder on the, 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 at the Oscars. <laughs> Just looking oh around God. like that. Huh? <laughs> it's going, oh, clap, I'll clap. <laughs> well, also, shout out to the Discord. I love you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Discord's Connor, been on fire What lately. a bunch of kidders. I will shout out to the, I did quick, out to the like, YouTube surprise. comments. I did like a quick surprise ask me anything a couple days ago when I was on a plane. Thank you all who asked questions. Oh, I totally forgot. This may be too late. Uh, okay. Who the fuck? Waffle, well, I mean. No, that was no, Monty. That was Monty. Oh. That was Monty just toasted. You, where you did good, you Monty? Go? Sorry, my d I scrolled. I, I was like, I love you, Discord. And then I was scrolling up in the live chat. <laughs> and you then clicked it out. Discord. Oh, no. Good yeah. job. Well, I was, was going to say, someone came up to a friend of mine who was a bartender uh, over the past week and said they really liked me and Iskun in The Unexpectables. And I wanted to shout them out. And I don't know their name. It wasn't given to me. But I know who you are. And you know who you are. So thank you. That was really cool of you to just like 
unprompted talk about that to a bartender. Super cool. So thank you. Rare. Um, I guess that just leaves me. They can find me on Twitter, Twitch. Oh my God, we had you too. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm always last. Don't worry. I can I can do you, Connor. You're first in our hearts. Excuse me. So. Connor, best for last. It's true. You are the best of us. You are the best of us. The best. The best. The best. The best. The best. The best. All right, I gotta hit the jukebox again. Hang on. <laughs> uh, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Blue Sky, and Tumblr at Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, currently playing through Yakuza Like a Dragon on Saturdays, and this Saturday it will be before uh, our last session of Baldur's Gate before. October starts. October. That's right. We tried to figure out if there was a way we could squeeze in more Baldur's Gate during it's the not week feasible. throughout October. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just not happening. So we'll do it in November. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's, it's your it, fault. It, it it's not. It's, it's our schedules and with Saturdays. Scheduling on our our part was uh, the ah uh, uh, the linchpin there. Yeah. But oh, gosh. I feel uh, like I don't want to go. It's like it's my month off and I should be excited, but I'm like, man, I know yeah, I need a break. Get Zito back in here. Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's again. keep going. Yeah, another two <laughs> hours, I think. But like, it's yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I love, I love what we do so much, but I also need a break. But at the same time, I don't want a break, but I need it. And that's the part that's like the most like, Monty. Nah. I've seen what happens when you don't have a break. Yeah, yeah, let's no, not go down that road. You're definitely let's breaking. Not. We will forcibly put you on vacation. Yeah. Uh, I will buy a boat and put you on it. Whoa. I only play Conquest with people who take breaks. <laughs> That's <laughs> your move, yeah. Monty. Got you fucking cornered. That's oh, the real shit. threat. Boom. Boom. Uh, Headshot. Also, they can uh, find my homebrew content on the DMs Guild. Uh, likely early to mid October, I'll be releasing the Fulgur Mancer's Spellbook, which is the ultimate sort of lightning spell uh, book. Uh, that has a lot of. Yeah? Sorry, just the pacing was great. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find the right words uh, because I've got a bunch of weird stuff in the Fulgur Mancer's Guide. Uh, I keep wanting I keep wanting to say Fulgrimancer's Guide. That's not the name of it. It's the Fulgrimancer Spellbook. Uh, Defibrillate is my favorite spell in the... Uh, <laughs> I in want the, a reason to use that spell. It looks really fun. Uh, it's... It, it has some very interesting early level interactions with uh, certain mechanics in the game, I will say. And I'm... I'm my goal with these elemental subclasses is to try to find um, unique ways to use each different element. And I, I feel like I've done a pretty good job with that so far. And Floormancer is no different. But that will be out early to mid next month because I've got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> um, who man. Uh, but yes, other than that, this episode is brought to you in part Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice. Die Hard Dice. Ah. Jesus. <laughs> They're so good. They didn't roll an actual one on the drinking Blessings. competition. Sorry, I'm allergic to awesome dice, so I sneeze. Dang. It's true. Oh. Sneezing all the time, Monty. Die Hard Dice love... is your one stop shop. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> For dice and the... dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLE to save 10% on your order. They have, dice. Dice. they have pumpkin dice. They have pumpkin dice, you guys. It's spooky month. They have pumpkin dice. That's awesome. And, and ghost dice. Damn. Spook Super your spook. players. You too can spook your players. Scary natural ones. <laughs> it just the, the natural one spot just says. I am I am in my natural one era. I don't know what's going on. It's just it's here, and I just have to accept it. You you rolled a natural one you instead didn't, of a one. It just says boo. You didn't ask Obama for help once today. Obama betrayed me last time, or did you forget the lore? <laughs> <laughs> it's because you were relying on him too much, but he hasn't I, completely forgotten about you. I, 
I don't like the con. I don't know how I feel about the concept of unexpectables Obama lore. <laughs> like that, that sentence to me is just like. Hey, mm. Does he have a wiki page? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, so, yeah we gotta get on. on that. I don't even think Mr. Gall has a wiki page yet. He's in the yeah, he he's in the TV trope. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, fucking Obama, like please listen. Just okay. add Obama as a side. Obama. Trip. He's he's got put him in the pantheon. Yeah, I was gonna say Obama's part of the fucking deities list. You, you, you can just put you can just put an apostrophe after the O. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude. No one will ever be able no, to know the difference. They'll never get it. Patron saint of just Zan's role. He's the he, <laughs> no, he's the god of fourth wall breaks. Use use code unexpectables to save ten percent on your order. <laughs> That's what we were. That was the initial purpose. That's where of this. we were. Yeah. <laughs> also check out our spring store um a uh, bunch of unexpectables related designs we've got uh the workout design that we just released and we're gonna have some new ones uh soon here hopefully we just need to get figured out uh what exactly is happening with those uh gateway fans maybe uh be on the lookout for designs in our spring store uh but with that uh we got to get to some bits and subs because you, you are every part. You get the you. Soldier boy, tell them. Um, <laughs> uh, the people who donate bits and subs are every bit a part of we being able you. to make us. Every bit. Every bit. Every bit begins of, with them. Of bringing us back here week in, week out, so we can keep bringing content like this to you. Uh, Bosco, where do we leave off? Uh, Mikan Pachi, I didn't get to read. That was the last one I got to. So For the 45 bits? Uh, 95, I think. Okay. Ah, I see. All right. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 95 bits. Knox, Knox, who's dire? I still yeah, hate that one. I still hate him. Twisty the Kitty, thank you for the 100 bits. So, Monty, the unboxing. Is it Conquest Minis? Oh, yeah, no. that one. You already yeah, asked that know. one, yeah. It's well, D&D ones. Uh, I have to pick them up. Go though. to the next Mekon one. I might have messed you up. It might be right. 45. Let me find it. Find it. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Mekon Pachi, think of the 45 bets. Monty, who would win in a fight? Rare Gerard or a medicine bottle from Walgreens? <laughs> That's the one. Oh, <laughs> oh my no, God. It's oh. Proof. I don't oh, know what Walgreens no. is, but I know child locks, and they are the, the, a barbarian versus a child lock. The child lock wins every single oh, fucking yeah. time. Fight of the fucking century. You give a you give a, a container of Tide Pods to Rare Gerard, and there's going to be a hole in the wall in <laughs> oh, like an no. hour. He's probably going to eat the Tide Pods. <laughs> he would. <laughs> they look like they're filled with calories. Why wouldn't I eat them? They told me not to lick the Nintendo Switch cartridge. I licked 12. Oh, man. <laughs> Volk551, five, five, thank you for the 100 bits. With no hope, you still have spite. Not smite, spite. Spite is a great reason to keep going. <laughs> smite is also a reason to keep going. Uh, Xanalus Grim, thank you for the 100 bits. Bosco, no shields. Nice, we read it again. Good. Bosco, still no shields. Get on that. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, Bosco, headshot? Anonymous, thank you for getting a tier one sub to Panic F C F F G C. Oh, fighting games. Come on, <laughs> Connor. Connor. <laughs> Listen, it's near the end of the video. What are you gonna do? Demonetize us? Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna look at the yellow the yellow dollar sign. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> No, you're gonna do it. You're gonna uh, do that with pride, hands on your hips, smiling like, I yeah, did I did yeah, that. I did that. <laughs> what are you gonna do, demonetize us, motherfucker? I beg you, please don't do that. Last words of man demonetized. <laughs> Disco Tech Priest, thank you for the 300 bits. Hey, Gaijin, Speaking of big stompy robots, currently debating between getting a knight or springing for a warhound. Well, unfortunately, he's no longer here. No, I'm just joking. Those are very, <laughs> Get very both expensive of them. models. Why not both? Poor K, no lustos. Uh, Arkhal, thank you for the raid with the 27. <gasps> Sorry. Damn. <clears throat> 
Damn. I heard his evil twin has some inflammatory opinions on Final Fantasy XIV. Oh. <laughs> <I'm gone. laughs> Contrary to usual tropes, he's the one without the eye patch. Wow. Is the evil twin named Skarkal? <laughs> oh my god! Yo! Oh. Yo! <laughs> Skarkov. I was thinking Darkolf, but I really like oh, Skarkov. Darkolf is good too. Oh my god. Darkolf is the last Nita. name. Yeah, Skarkov, Darkolf. <laughs> oh my god. It's like reverse oh my Milo all over again. <laughs> Zen Lita, thank you for the 100 bits. If they take Princess. Oh. <laughs> if they take the Princess's placenta, its power would be the center of the spell. The placenta, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love and hate that. Uh oh. Thanks, son. <laughs> Hulksternator, <laughs> thank you for the 28 months of Prime. Wait a second, Oslomir Harlan? Colonel Sanders' first name is Harlan. Quick Otho, get the red string. Holy shit. The chicken. Don't you drag it? I'm not, I, it I, think I, answered, I think I answered this in a Q&A, but Oslomir Harlan's design is actually one of the references. Like, it was a mood board. And one of them was literally like the Colonel Sanders from the Colonel Sanders dating game I used. I'm like, I, I kind of want this. I remember that, actually. Yeah. I'm like, See, I chat, this. if Redman is based off that, there's no chance for Strago. I'm sorry. Uh, Redman's great. I love Redman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry he keeps disappearing on you, but he has his reasons. He He's was gathering. hard to get. I get it. He I get left, it. He Cat left mouse. To he left to gather the boys because he saw that like you were getting Rosar to drink, and he's like, "Oh, I'm capitalizing on this shit. We're playing Princess <laughs> Keep Away today." Damn. <sighs> Where was I? Fiend Tales comic. Thank you for the raid. Party of seven. The Atom Bomb. Thank you for the twenty-three months. Resubbed after a long while. Moved out on my own and trying to master budgeting. Don't worry. Rent is top priority. It's good to be back. Well, good on you, Adam Bomb. Yeah. Congratulations. Wish you much stability. Yeah. yeah. Donut specialist. Thank you for the 18 months. Oh my god, I want to be that person. I don't what know why. I, I picture like a like a dude in like a ghillie suit with like the military getup, but <laughs> yeah. it's it's like full of long johns. <laughs> He's got like a bazooka Just covered in sprinkles. Chronos. He's Amazing. got like one of those those bullet like you know heavy weapons guys got that that holster of bullets the on the front except yeah. it's just filled with donuts instead. Yeah. He like holds a, an especially long long john with Bavarian cream. He fires it. Tiger Diane. No, uh, the tactical like a, bear claw. Yeah, treat it like a, a grenade. He just bites the half of it off and then chucks it. <laughs> God, I love <laughs> Oh my it. God. Gamer till sunrise. Thank you for the five hundred bits. Can I get a birthday shout out for my wife, Ash, who fully supports my trucking career and loads my freezer with homemade meals for my month long trips? Ash, Damn. happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Why are also, you so amazing? Good, good trucking. Like, yeah, so I, I was seriously. trucking for my first job. Dude, it's a tough job. Keep your eyes on the road. Keep safe. You're going to get all seriously. the trucks, dude. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Seriously, you're both troopers. Clear and skies you're and both clear roads, and you are, you are the best partner. You are the perfect compliment. Dreadlord Bedrock, thank you for the 32, or the 42 months of Savage. Twitcher Barry, thank you for the 500 bits. Did I stutter? The prince is going... It, the prince is going to match Doros yet. What? <laughs> what? Oh, the uh, prince is going to match Doros yet. It's like that thing. I don't that, know. Uh, you know. That's a really high bar for them to hit. See, it's interesting because like Doros and Willow were like like slow burn into a full marriage, and like oh, yeah. Rerjar and Aya were like immediately married without knowing each other. Mm. It's like completely different circumstances. It's completely the opposite. They have the big small ratio, though. Of course, every single thing I'm involved with is going to have that at least once. I'm sorry, that's for me. Fuck off. <laughs> size <laughs> size for difference me. is pretty good. I understand. It yeah. is. It's a good dynamic. Uh, it's a great dynamic. I love the aggressive Zen. apology, followed by an immediate turnaround of like, "No, fuck you. <laughs> no, it's fuck for off. me, bitch." <laughs> Zen Lee, to think for the 100 bits episode title, Hidewife. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. 
Stellar Coyote, you think, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Monty, if you really want to keep people from eating dice, don't tell them about the pumpkin dice. We are in autumn, after all. I changed my mind. Eat the dice. Eat the pumpkin dice. Eat them and oh, become... The what? Uh, the oh. thoughts and opinions of Monty Glutivere do not necessarily reflect those of that unexpected. For level. real. Uh, but like, actually... Z on the blue dragon, thank you for the 50 bits. Love the dwarfin and the idea for the title Epiphany and Bad Decisions. Callum Draws, thank you for the 30 bits. This is almost October. If a werewolf is made out of sand, would they be a dryconthrope? Ooh. They got they got split up really weird on my screen. Yeah. The delivery wasn't the greatest, but I approve of the joke. It was. It said dry can throw, and then the <laughs> 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 dry can hope. Ace Bounty, they give me one hundred bits. My phone hates me. It won't let me sub. See you for spoopy fun. Hell yeah! Very Hell excited. Yeah. Your Bubba Bob, you. thank you for the four hundred bits. Question for Monty: Would electrum tipped weapons count as being silver? <laughs> Fuck you! It's like gold weapons in Minecraft. They just break instantly and you die. <laughs> That order. I see. This is Dan Wind, thank you for the 40 months. Callum Draws, thank you for the 30 bits. Episode title, Glass Half Full. Ooh. I, I wrote that one down. I like that one too. That is good. Zen Lee, thank you for the 100 bits. Obama, god of this one particular guy, shitty dice luck. <laughs> <laughs> the most specific Celest god ever. Cel Celestial of Osha, goddess of workplace safety. <laughs> Osha. Oh, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and X Wily Willy, thank you for the 42 months. Hell yeah. Dude, you, you found the answer to life, somebody. the universe, and everything. Is that so the last one? I have bit? a suggestion. Yeah, I have a suggestion for one. a raid. I do too. Ooh. Okay, I was going to suggest Durko because they're streaming rarely on a Wednesday and they're playing Boulder's Gate. And they only have four viewers. They only have four viewers. Yeah, let's so... read Durko. You want to just check to make sure they're not ending? I will double check. I'm looking. Uh, I've got a commercial. Me too. God They've been it. streaming for six and a half hours. But yeah, they could very easily be Holy ending. Holy moly. We'll All right, almost there. Two seconds. Uh, they are still playing. Like yeah, they looks are like still they're playing. fighting something. Yeah. All right. We're going to raid Darko Draco. I don't want to get up. spoiled, so I'm going to look away. Yeah. Heads up. It is it is Baldur's Gate. So if you want spoilers, just be aware. But Yeah, they're pretty oh, yeah. far in. Too, they're so, pretty yep. far in. Uh, our raid message. What should our raid message be? Uh, kill the dragon. Hide wife. <laughs> Hide, Hide wife. wife. Hide wife. I'm good with that. Raid message. Go. Hide wife. <laughs> Hi, wife. Bye, Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Get out of here. <laughs> Elvis? Get on.